I survived 100 days of medieval Minecraft hardcore, and this is a big boy. So much happened in this movie that you won't want to miss. There's also a lot of moments and areas from my series and previous movies on my channel in here, including my Ocean Only World lore series, which there's an update in this movie that you won't want to miss for the lore series. Really quickly, I'm incredibly close to 1 million subscribers, and it would mean a lot to me if you'd subscribe. Also, here's a huge challenge. 100,000 likes and I'll do 200 days of medieval Minecraft hardcore. Now, a cool thing for this RPG medieval mod pack is the beginning. There's a few dozen classes and races you can choose from. Being a human is just regular Minecraft. Boring. Avian is kind of cool, don't take fall damage, however, I have to sleep high up, kind of annoying. Arachnids are eh, you get three less hearts and can't eat veggies. A League of Legends player basically, and an elf is too tall and goblins are goblins. But then, I found the Shulk. You get an extra nine inventory slots, natural armor which is like four slots extra I believe, and some other cool stuff. It's just, I can't use a shield, which I already don't. After spawning in, the world looked magical. I spawned in some village and just wanted to look around a little bit. Get my bearings down and then, well, an iced out dragon spawned right in front of me and I tried to run away. I found out I could run through leaves, but slower, and then died, just like our allcraft. This pack is gonna be fun, and this wasn't the only death. I tried about four more times and they all ended up the same. Then I selected Shulk one last time, and spawned in. I ended up in this valley place with a river on both sides of this village. The scenery was gorgeous and I made sure there were no dragons nearby. I was on edge and figured this duck would kill me, or little greeby. Either way, it's probably a murderer. Now for some more RPG stuff. Leveling up. So it uses the same experience as Minecraft levels, in a way, and there's five different stats to level up. But the only important one is strength. I just needed more armor to survive anything. I want to be a literal tank. You deal more damage and have more armor each level. So this is a no-brainer. Oh, here's a huge thing. There's a glitch with the map mod in here. No matter what beacons from previous worlds and lives show up, and I can't get rid of most of them. Now to get in my loot goblin mode. I stole a small amount of hay bales, 31, and then went to their homes. However, they were incredibly rude and didn't have anything for me, except for this blacksmith house, which had an iron chest plate, boots, and a sick eye patch for me. And you better bet that I took it. I'm tired of dying in here. Also, iron armor isn't that much help. At this point, I wasn't sure what to do. I normally die at this point. So I stole some more hay bales, now at 43. Another weird thing with this mod pack is tree cutting. If I don't shift and break a log, this happens. Not sure why, but I still get the log. So uh, I got a shift while chopping down trees. There's also a question here, something to help direct me on what to do or what I should try and do during this movie, which the first quest was done. Start a world and don't die to some dragon trying to eat your cheeks, which gave me four items. Just beginning stuff and I looked at the next quest. I need to get some obsidian, chains, and cold deep stone. No idea where to get that, but the rest should be easy. I used the loot bag I got from the quest and got some alright starting items. I didn't say this in the beginning, but shulks can also break stone with their hands. So, uh, I went and punched stone and skipped wooden tools and went straight for stone. Felt like a normal penguin at this point. After getting situated, I turned the hay bales into weed and then into a small amount of two stacks of bread. I'm, uh, good for the rest of the movie on food now, basically. I went over to the side of the hill and collected some coal, since it gives experience. I want to level up as fast as I can and get to a decent number on strength. Need to fulfill my birthright of being an M1 Abrams tank. But night was finally falling and I really didn't want to fight any baddies at night. I searched around for a bed and went back to the blacksmith's house. Dug out his stairs and went to the bed and finally slept. Day one, complete. Really quickly, this movie is sponsored by Apex Gaming PCs. I created a line of three computers for you all to choose from so you can play any game you want. And if you use code SKIES at checkout, you'll get 5% off your order. Now, back to the movie. I woke up luckily to no dragons and really wanted to do a good deed. I noticed there was a tortoise in the water and I didn't want him to drown, so I saved him from the water. I can make this village my base, but honestly, I want to explore. There's so much in this mod pack and I'm going to experience it all. I saw some campfire in the distance and headed over there to check it out. It was looking like a regular campsite, especially with the skulls on spikes. It reminded me of my fourth grade camping trip, and inside the tents were chests. The first one had something only Gordon Ramsay would want, and then I saw it. A mega fan. I broke the flower wall that was keeping the beast back, and after that, it noticed me. It rushed me for an autograph or to kill me, but I like the latter more. Makes me feel special. I saw for a few frames that there's another ogre goblin thing in the tent and I ran to the river. Three hearts left and I was freaking out at this point because I couldn't put down my boat. I thought I was going to die until it finally left my hands and I boated away fast. With a nice distance between me and Megamind, I healed up on bread, got scurvy, and went back to the monster for a fair fight. I said hi to him and now I'm really hoping the average enemy isn't like this. For some weird reason, the troll dropped a literacy bag. I opened it up and 
and it had some strange items. But those aren't important. This book is the important one. The Time I Was Slapped with a Salmon, Volume 4. There's three more? Obviously a highly valuable treasure, which is now mine. I saw another troll to the left of the camp, but he didn't see me. So I snuck into the other tent and went for the chest. Inside, five iron, four sticks, and five bowls. I borrowed the loot and headed off again in the river and saw this enchanted fish to my right. A short ways ahead, I came across some giant pumpkins. I could hear Starbucks and white girls rushing to this area right now. In the distance, there's this house in a camp, but I went to the right to see if there was anything in these tall trees, which there was some camp with some very strange goat people. I was cautious, but these dudes just really wanted to jam out. They were partying, circling this campfire, and playing a fun tune. They didn't have any loot for me to steal, so I went on ahead and saw this troll camp and some building that was for sure to have some good loot. I bonked the troll on the head and something about him not liking sharp objects in him. Apparently, swords are bad. Also, uh, shields are bad, which I'm confused on why I can even use one. Being a shulk, that was one of the downsides is that I can't use shields. Anyways, the chest had the exact same things and amounts in both of them, so I just looted those and headed back to those first tents and building I saw. Now, now, walking up to the house and going inside, this happened. The entire house was rigged to blow, and the door was blocked. I barely got the axe out, broke the log, and sprinted away. The explosion going off right behind me. I headed back inside because surely there shouldn't be any more traps. It's also nighttime and I hear skeletons around me. I made my way to the attic and finally went to sleep. I was on high alert when waking up and was also looking for any hidden chest. I wasn't really hearing the skeletons anymore, but I didn't trust this place or area. I shot out the back of the house and sprinted to the left. Before entering the home, I didn't show them, but I saw these clone girls called Ara in the front. And well, they have interesting hearts, but also don't attack me. No idea what they do or what they want, but thought I'd show you this. After running a short distance, I saw this miniature Greek temple thing, and a whole lot of tents and buildings along the way there. The first tent had a stone sword and some iron, and then I saw those buildings again. I don't know if you remember my 100 days in modded Minecraft hardcore video, which you should go watch if you want some nostalgia, but these are the same ender and there's supposed to be some giant ones that hurt a ton. But coming up to the building, there was just an aura and the remains of that Enderman. So maybe auras are deadly? After that, I took the dungeon bag and went to the miniature Greek temple, which had this frozen human thing, and after breaking it, it's apparently a marble statue. But it dropped this fancy shield, an iron sword, and some other stuff. But I tried to block with the shield and it won't let me. So this is what the shulk shield thingy means. I can't use any shield other than the spawn one I got which I also don't think works. Back to the loot, the chest didn't have anything good, and up next, I saw some nether-looking building on this mountain. Also, this grave at the foot of the mountain, and I'm only showing this because of how insane the loot is. The most important item in there are these iron boots with Mana Regen 7 on them. No idea what that does, but I put them on. I then climbed up the mountain, and upon reaching the top, there's more towers everywhere, and there he is, a dragon. Or at least I think it's a dragon. I don't see the wings. I don't, however, want to go over there and check if it has wings, so I went to the nether structure and looked around. There's nothing on the floor, but there is another floor, in a way, so I went up and, yep, there's a chest. Inside, it has three golden hoes, reminded me a few Hefner, a snow chest plate, and a cursed crossbow. Only day three, and we're already getting some serious upgrades. I took this time to get situated and geared up, and then went to sleep. I made it down the tower, and I want to check out those dragon dinosaur massive lizard things. I don't know, but I see they're guarding that Greek temple, and last time it had some decent loot, so with that all in mind, I made the smart decision and went to the right and headed to this wizard tower instead. There's no traps behind these trap doors, so I should be safe right? I went through the front door like any sane person would and saw some book on the wall. Something about tomes for boots. My guess is something to do with magic. It was the same thing leading up to the top and I was expecting some kind of boss fight or a wizard, but no. There was just bookshelves and this chest and then I opened it. I immediately heard TNT ignite and I tried my best to run. Now I understand why the stairs were designed to take a while and explosions were going off. I thought I was going to die here, but uh, no. I didn't even lose half a heart. I said hi to Ratatouille and a cool thing I forgot to mention is that dropped items on the ground have these cool beams, kind of like Borderlands, and they have different colors showing rarity. That's how I noticed this orange drop, which turned out to be a diamond shovel, and if I right click on a block with it, it'll place a torch at the cost of four durability, which might come in handy. I looked around some more, but none of the dropped items were good, just building blocks. I went back down to the floor, and you know what? I'm sure they might kill me, but I have upgraded my strength to about level six. I got some good loot now, and I should be able to handle the dragons. I went to the front door after 
after hearing them roar and went to the top of the tower. With my vast knowledge of traps in this world now, I went around and broke all of the TNT blocks. Hopefully it should be safe now and then hope in the chest, which had by far the most useless loot to me. Surely there has to be more, right? The other tower gave me this awesome shovel and no, there's nothing. I went back down and listened to Goatman jam out to some tunes and it was time to fight the dragon. I found out they're overworld drakes, so I guess I'm half right on them being dragons. Anyways, I can't hit it. I'm too scared to get closer, so I went back in the tower and I accidentally hit the goat dude and the drake at the same time. I had to kill him and then got to work on the drake. It has 70 health and can hit me through walls. But look, whenever it hits me, it barely does any damage. My genius idea of only upgrading strength is working out. After saying hi to the first drake, I went to the Greek temple, broke the statue, and inside the chest is a golden apple, a diamond, and an emerald. Honestly, not that bad of a chest. Then the next drake, I just rushed it. I know it can't kill me and I, uh, said hi to the drake while it was screaming at me and it only hit me once. A pretty good fight. After stealing from the poor and giving to the rich, I found another miniature Greek temple that has golden apples and a vase? But I also found out about poison ivy, which hurts rapidly. So I broke those plants, all an infected sheep, and I won't lie, I figured this was a trap, because why wouldn't it be? But no, these vases are apparently just something kind in the world and give out free golden apples. And I found another golden apple right below this marble statue. Uh, back to the fun, I came across Shrek's hut. It had a nice boulder in front of the door, and I think I saw a donkey nearby compliment it. The entire place looked way too sketchy. I stayed near the front door in case I heard TNT light, and I broke the carpet, revealing this trap door. It was all reminding me of vanilla igloos with a trap door in the center, so I went down slowly. I was prepared for anything, and I dropped into this room. It's exactly like those igloos. There's a villager to the left and a zombified villager to the right. I don't want to cure it though, because I don't plan on making a villager trading hall. The chest to the left luckily wasn't rigged to explode like I thought it was, and inside, basically a lot of nice upgrades. It has a stronger chest plate, but the big thing are these boots. You don't put them on like regular ones, you put them in your relic slot. And these bad boys apparently make me go big boom boom if I jump in land while holding shift. So I went out to test them out. Oh hey look, it's Bumble's cousin, Big Nose McGee. I just wanted to show that clip because I'm testing out a new subtitle thing and I want your opinion on it. Would you like it if I subtitled all of my videos from now on like that? Back to the video. I wanted to explore that graveyard thingy in the wizard tower, however, I still don't like to fight those endermen. So I went down this mountain and tested out those new boot relics. And yep, I don't take fall damage if I hold shift while landing and I go big boom boom. In this area there's some tents but also this grave which has the greatest loot in the world. Uh, really happy with it and then found this garbage loot. Ugh, disgusting yuck stuff. I got some more golden apples while pillaging this place and then my nightmares came back. I'm gonna assume these are some kind of icy flying drakes, but I didn't really feel like asking them. And then they flew. While looting, I thought they were coming for me, so I hightailed it out of there. I headed the opposite direction over the hill and in the distance, I think I found my home. Maybe. It's a massive looking home, but I know there's going to be some kind of boss in there. Or at least a lot of enemies. But there's also this small house right behind me. I saw a villager earlier, but I have no idea where he went. So I slowly entered the house, looked around, and I wasn't seeing anything. I helped light up the place and made my way up these stairs, and I saw the villager sleeping with his eyes open. But he looks blind, so I guess it cancels itself out. Anyways, he's called the gatekeeper. Before falling asleep, I remember seeing this ladder. So I went to check it out, and I gained access to the attic. And once I entered it, there was this nether portal looking thing, made out of lunar stone bricks. It's probably nothing, but I can turn this attic into a nice storage place. So I cleared out the cobwebs and then went to sleep right next to the gatekeeper. And when I woke up, he kind of just ran away. He didn't even take the stairs. He just wanted to sprint out of the house. I'm just taking that as he's really happy that I'm here and he really appreciates my presence. But today's the day we take on that mansion. I first, however, would like an empty inventory to do that. So I went up to the attic, cleaned it up, and placed down some chests all throughout the room. I got organized after that, which took me around four minutes, and then went outside and placed down the marble statues, which one of them turned into a girl. I started to get these open GL errors throughout the day, which I think only happened today. I fixed it after this. So I went down the hill without using the boom boom shoes and went to the thin strip of land in the front. As soon as I made my way up the stairs, I got shot. I couldn't see where they were, so I tried to hide. Then I sort of saw them. Invisible skeletons. I guess this is a mansion of skeleton assassins. It's pretty awkward finding something you can't see and that's probably not there. Usually it's easy to beat up the shadow people and then I got this achievement that showed a rabbit skin in the picture. So now I'm going to assume I'm fighting invisible rabbits. Something I never thought I would say. I lit up the entire bottom floor and outside so the spawning stopped and I went over to the first chest. Inside is a diamond or some iron armor and on the other side of the entrance 
the chest has some iron stuff, but nothing really important. After looting, I went up the ladder cautiously and lit up the area closest to me, but I ran out of torches. I could have used a diamond shovel, however, I didn't want to waste the durability. The sun was setting, so I wanted to be fast. My game was lagging for some reason, and the chest freaked out on me, and I broke it. The other chest didn't really have anything, and I looted the entire building. I jumped out of the window and obeyed gravity. I headed back home, went up the hill, and got organized. The OpenGL error message wouldn't go away no matter what I did, so I just turned my chat off. Won't be seeing it anymore this movie. Anyways, I headed back to the Invisible Rabbit Shooter Mansion and finished lighting up the second floor. I was also intrigued by this big pile of crafting tables. It doesn't make sense to me. And after thinking about it for a few minutes, this place is cool. It would make a nice starter home for me, but I like the other house with the gatekeeper. Since he has a lot of health, I think that means he'll be a good fighter. So if a dragon spawns there or something, he should be able to help me out, hopefully. I also just wanted to explore. I don't want to keep moving stuff around. There's a lot to explore in this mod pack, like these little dragon chihuahuas. No, really, they're tiny, aggressive for no reason, and love to bite my ankles. They're also allergic to swords. After that was dealt with, I continued on, saw some tents, two random platinum ingots on the ground, and then came across my least favorite RL craft mob, fairies, or pixies. Either way, I really hate them. This one took coal from me, I think, and sprinted faster than a reseller trying to get some PS5s. I got it cornered in a tree and politely asked for my coal back. I then went nuclear down a mountain and found the jam and goatman again. I saw this pan flute in their hidden chest and as any white person would, I followed the rhythm and tempo to the song perfectly. However, the sun was setting and I forgot to grab a bed, as usual, so I quickly ran all the way back home, went into the attic and got organized. I'm going to follow this quest line to keep some kind of guide on what to do in this mod pack, and so stuff doesn't get too derailed. I need to make this light and dark chest, which I got the obsidian in chains for, which these chains look different than the ones on the recipe. I just need that cold deep stone now, and my guess is that it's underground and not in the sky. So I went outside, foolishly started my mine from on top of this mountain, and got to digging. From the mining in previous fights, I got my strength up to level 7, and also broke my pick. I was thinking of just punching away stone, like I do in real life, but I'm a lot slower in here, and I'm too impatient for this. So I went back up, made myself another pick, and then went back into the mines. Also, do you like that speedy mining montage? Let me know in the comments. But disaster had to strike. My pick broke again. I don't remember iron picks being this terrible. It was night anyways, and I don't want to let baddies spawn in on me, so I went up, did the usual, and went to bed. I looked up where to find cold deep stone, and, well, it's apparently at the same level as the warden. You know, that new mob that was supposed to be in 1.18? Yeah, so I went back down into my mine and reached this icy looking dark cave. I could have dropped down in there, but I had a strong feeling that I shouldn't do that, in case the warden is nearby. I wasn't seeing anything, but I'm not taking chances. I built the staircase down to the floor, and once getting there, I saw some skeletons in the back just standing along this wall. I stuck to the other side to not aggro them and lit it up. Once I looked at the floor, bingo! I found cold deep stone. I don't know if I'll need any later on, so I took more than I needed. Before leaving, however, I saw this strange artifact place. In the center, something was lighting up blue, but I wanted to quickly get out instead of investigate it. Once I got to the stairs though, one of the skeletons saw me. It began to chase me up the stairs and it revealed itself as a wither skeleton, something I truly don't want to get hit by. I'm sure I can tank it, but it's better to be safe than sorry. Or in my case, not be able to reach it because if I get closer it'll hit me, so we had this awkward dance going up the stairs, but I finally said hi to it and it dropped. Literally nothing. Just two raw platinum. But I need something called a plasma furnace for it, which to me sounds like something I'll never get to. To. Night was approaching, and apparently so were these heavenly angels playing music for me. I don't know where it's coming from or why I have this luck effect on me. I just feel like a boss is coming. I ran inside, but before falling asleep, I wanted to make that light and dark chest for the quest, which didn't work. I checked over everything, and the only thing that didn't look like the recipe were the chains. But this is how you make chains. Then I noticed that cycle button right above the recipe slot. So yeah, I made the correct chains, and then I made the light and dark chest. Weirdly enough, however, I completed the quest, but in it, it says I need to place it at Bedrock Levely. Anywho, I collected the rewards and looked at the next quest. I need to kill the Goblin King, but first, we sleep. So for the Goblin King, it says that he will spawn all around the world. 
most likely in some kind of castle. I just need to find it. I set out in the river to check out the surrounding land. Also, just so I don't have to be underground anymore. I came to this three-way intersection river stream and saw some buildings to check out. First up was the gatekeeper's house again. I found the dude's brother, or mortal enemy, but I'm sure that's the same thing. Sadly, there was nothing inside for me to loot. I left a turd on his bed to show my disappointment and headed over to this hidden-ish building I saw from across the stream. Upon walking up to it, it looked like a stable, had hay like a stable, and it also has horses like a stable. So, I came to the conclusion that this is a wheat factory and stole some hay bales for food. Right next to the wheat factory were some small buildings. Maybe the perfect size for goblins? Who knows? I didn't see any, but with my massive brain and hunter instincts, I felt like I was on the right path. It was especially obvious to me when I went to this building on the river and saw this goblin. I tried to break the grass to see its name, but I accidentally hit it, starting a legendary boss battle, and for a split second, I saw its name. Goblin Warrior. I must be getting close. The village next to the building, however, was an enderman one. Well, more specifically, a Farlander one, which had a glare in it. One of the three mobs from the Minecraft 2021 mob vote. Just wanted to show this sense, I think the glare looks cool. But we all know the fun can't continue. I'm getting really comfortable around these areas now. I'm losing my edge. After I killed the troll villager, I went to get a drink. And then it happened. A dragon. A fire one at that. He immediately lit me up and I just ran. No time to think. The fire wasn't going out either. And I'm not too far from the river. I ate some golden apples to help me heal up and ate bread along the way. I just barely made it to the river and I thought I was safe. One heart remaining. I healed up three more before I got hit by some fire again. The dragon is following me and I can't escape it. Oh my god, it's still coming after me. I'm going to die. I'm going to die. I'm going to die right here. I'm going to die right here. The monster picked me up and dropped me, luckily. I tried to get into my boat to get away, but no, he lit me up. I have to fight it. The beast picked me up and wouldn't let me go. This is going to be a reoccurring thing. Luckily, my strength is at 8, so my armor is a lot stronger than normal. But I don't have much armor left. I'm down to one heart. I ate a golden apple. The fiery beast came back and lifted me into the air. I thought I was dead for sure. He let me go and hurled me at the water. I had half a heart for a few milliseconds. That golden apple barely saved me. I got my crossbow out and waited for him to pick me up again. I shot. At this rate, the crossbow would deal more damage than my iron sword. The beast picked me up again and bit me. Half a heart remaining. I healed up and tried to shoot it while underwater. I was panicking at this moment and my arrows went nowhere. I tried to swim away to make some distance to heal. I ran out of air and was drowning, but I didn't want to go into the air to take more fire damage. The lower I am, the better I can dodge at least. My helmet and boots were broken and my pants were next. Only eight durability remaining. I wouldn't survive much longer if I stayed here. I tried to swim away, but he was hurting me badly with fire and then I was running out of air again. I went up for some air, my pants broke, and I did the last thing I thought would save me. I dug down three blocks, quickly grabbed any block in my inventory and plugged the hole. The water drained and I was able to breathe. The dragon couldn't hurt me at this depth apparently and I dug down further until I reached a cave. At this moment, I'm safe. My chest plate is all that remains and it too is almost broken. I have no ores to make some armor and I didn't really find anything around here. I looked at that light and dark chest, maybe it would have something, but no. And then when I thought I was safe, I heard the dragon. He's getting closer. I can't spend any more time down here so I began to dig a tunnel. Making it to the surface, I very quickly scanned the area and then ran. I didn't see or hear the dragon and I wanted to stay that way. I made it to some swampy looking area, swam through, and saw this little goblin trapped in his tent. At this point, I'm just trying to get some armor, but all of the chests that I'm seeing so far have nothing. I made it to an open area with some spooky aura tents, which all had nothing, and I made it to another gatekeeper's house. No loot in here, so I let his muddy pig into the house to ruin his carpets. Then finally, I found another statue structure place and surely there would be armor in the chest up here. It's where I got my chest plate from, but no. The chest had some cool relics, weapons, and a robe. The one armor piece I don't need. And then I just made a dash to my house. I jumped down the mountain, sprinted up the necks, and I luckily was home. I went and got organized, suited up, and I'm finally somewhat protected again. But I'm definitely not heading to the right again. I don't want that dragon to come to this building. Night was setting and I just went to sleep. Before going out and traveling to the left, I headed down into the mines. I want to see what that strange structure was and see if the weather skeletons will drop me some armor. I took care of the first weather skeleton at the stairs and then began lighting up the cave. I went to this lava pool area and got an achievement, then found some cold shulks on the ground, which, as I know, is a sign of wardens, and I know how deadly they are. They're probably stronger than the dragons, so I went back to the stairs and took care of the rest of the weathers in the cave. All I got from them was this enchanting book and platinum ingots. 
Uh, really good stuff. I lit up the rest of the cave to prevent spawning and then checked out the strange structure. It just looked like a glorified chest holder, and I knew this was a trap. No way it wasn't. I broke the blocks below the chest, so in case anything was connected, it won't go off now. And inside the chest, actually not bad loot. I would look at it later and just picked everything up. Then I went below the chest area to check out this block with lights on it. You know, some energy battery, which it's on the same spot as the chest. So maybe it's all some sort a trap like if i didn't break the block below the chest something would have exploded or a boss would spawn in who knows i headed back up to the surface got organized again and then judged the gatekeeper for freaking me out because he opened a door while i was in a chest i miss exploring now you know i've been camping out in this area a little bit too long man that's something i don't want to do with this mod pack so i headed out to the left i want to find this goblin king and instead i found a furry a werewolf looking human charged me with his dogs in the back i made quick work with them and it was apparent. This world is out to get me. I headed off in the direction where I first found those Arrowcraft fairies and was retracking my old pathway. And then I came to that swamp that I found a few days ago. I figured this is a witch hut and I was cautious leading up to the door. I crept inside and I didn't hear any footsteps or noises. There was no real loot, just some bread and this place was just empty. I guess it was supposed to be some starter home in the swamp, but I don't need this. I just continued north. I'm guessing I can't actually tell the direction in here and I made it to some land. I traveled a couple hundred blocks when I made it to some satyr camp again and found another Shrek hut. I went down the trap door and in this chest is a game changer. Something that I'll be using throughout the movie. A golem totem. An incredibly powerful item that will allow me to summon an iron golem whenever I want. And you best believe I'm going to abuse this. Night was falling so I just camped out in the hut. And in the morning I did what every normal person does and went for a 60 miles jog. I came into this area with satyr tents, a village, and this jungle area that looks like a boss fight. Before heading over there though, I went to the Satyr's camp and, well, there's raccoons. They all stared at me and obviously wanted food, so I accidentally fed two of them while trying to open a chest. Rocket then got it on with his girlfriend and, well, I got the breeding achievement. I'm now the proud grandparent of a raccoon, something I never thought I would say. Anywho, after that was the village, and this is probably the most depressing village ever. Absolutely nothing for me to steal. I went house to house like Santa does, but I didn't leave them anything. Thing, except for some tears and a strongly worded letter that told them they all suck and they're mean. I ran away from there and found a weed factory again with, get this, nothing. Fast forwarding to some content, I found this white box. I heard some spiders down below, so like a smart person, I broke the roof. Definitely not heading into this death trap, but this harpy wanted to head into my death trap. Your typical rust player came out of the white box and luckily I was able to deal a lot of damage before it got up in my face. With that thing dead, I tore up the rest of the roof and got to the center chest. With incredible Incredible loot, just so good. There's only one more place I want to check out before heading into the spooky jungle area. I tore through some houses and did a lot of property damage, jumped onto a roof, and got into the nether building. And, well, it has some good weapons inside and some armor, but nothing special or that I really want. Now, for the moment we've been waiting for. I went across this tiny bridge, and I really wish I had a water bucket to help me traverse this. I jumped into the jungle, and it was really quiet in here. The entire time I'm thinking, there's a boss, or something. Some kind of monster in here. And to make it all worse, I can't travel across leaves. I can walk through them, meaning I can't really see too far because leaves will always be in my face. I can drop and fall at any moment without knowing it. And monsters can do the same. Anything can travel through these leaves like me. I made it into a nice opening and I could see some open center part. There's a Farlander building there with two giant Endermen, and of course, some fairies. I was minding my own business when one stole something from me. Not sure what it was, and my efforts to get it back were futile. It can fly through leaves. That loot was good as gone. I went to the water next and down below was some hole, however it looked like it led nowhere. So I went back up and another fairy robbed me. This one however didn't make it far and I got my item back. After that fun stuff I targeted one of the Endermen and I fought it in a very fair way. My inventory was full again and I wanted to head home to drop everything off. I chased down a fairy and killed it after a few minutes and then decided to just run through the night and dart home. Nothing really happened but I made it home and did the usual. I headed out left in the morning and headed basically in the same direction as before. I still want to find this goblin king place but to also explore. Like exploring these fairies with an iron sword. I tried to get out of this place as fast as possible but they all kept on tormenting me and stealing my items. It really reminded me of me but since it was happening to me I couldn't be 
be proud of them. I finally made it out and ran through some wetlands. Then my luck came through. I found two drakes and a lightning dragon. My heart sank and my feet went into overdrive. The dragon luckily targeted the drakes before noticing me, but that didn't matter. I sprinted as fast as I could. I kept turning around to see if it was chasing me, but I kept running. I ran through a dark forest to lose the dragon in case if it was coming. I ran a couple hundred blocks and finally felt safe. Then I found some little goblin warriors that wanted my kneecaps. I said hi to the welcoming party and I thought this would be an entrance to the goblin king's castle perhaps. I said hi to the pokemon sparrow inside and looted the chest. While looking around, I saw this floating fortress. Maybe a dungeon of some sorts. I went over and traveled up the waterfall. I was on my guard and this seemed a little too easy to enter. Once I broke my way inside, I saw a villager and some more off in the distance. This appears to be some sort of floating village. And when I went around to loot up their chest, it was a lot of iron tools and armor. So I re-equipped myself and filled up on food and whatnot. And the further I walked around, yeah, this was just a floating village. Possibly the safest base I could ask for as well. Night was falling, so this villager offered up this bed for me. So polite. I woke up and my bodyguards were waiting at the door. I felt really efficient and powerful here. I went back to exploring the place and it just felt like I was in a Greek goddess garden the entire time. And luckily, each bridge and edge to this place was safe. You could let any kid just run around here and not worry about them hurting themselves. The loot relatively stayed the same. Lots of iron armor and tools and I got these diamonds from the chest. Then came Raul. He told me how he wants to go skydiving, so I helped him with getting off the edge. However, I didn't see a parachute. He must have water bucketed or something. Just like this librarian wizard. He saw what Raul did and wanted to copy. I was I was just happy to help everyone fulfill their dreams. Seeing into the distance, I was trying to find my next area to visit. And there it was, another wizard tower. Hortensia over here wanted to start off the day with squaring up to me. I had to make an example out of them to the other villagers. It is what I would have said if I was a monster. Uh, they just disappeared though. No idea where Hortensia went. Quite strange. I pulled a Hortensia and headed off to the wizard tower, looting here and there along the way, and then made it to the tower. I had to search around for the front door, and on the first floor, zombie spawners. Somehow, they didn't trigger and spawn anything. Not complaining. The second floor had some stray spawners. And for every floor, just so I don't need to show it all, the chest does have some food, armor, and tools. So I got kitted up and took everything I wanted. The third floor had a skeleton and spider spawner, and same thing on the fourth floor. Then I made it to the last one, which had a few spawners, broke those, and it had diamond ores, gold, and emerald blocks, and no loot. I looked up on Google how to access my nine extra slots, since I still haven't seen them. Which, if I press G, that's how I access them them and put some items in there. Now I can loot even more. Then a new thing happened. Night was falling and I was thinking of where to go. Then the sound appeared and I knew something bad was coming. I was going to hide in the Shrek shack, but a ghost jumped out of nowhere and my screen went black. I'm such a poet. I started running, just didn't know where. I began to head back to the floating village place and mobs were spawning everywhere. Even this random seagull started to attack me. Nature was going crazy. I made it to the waterfall and headed up into the floating village. I sprinted over to that one house I slept in yesterday and was going to wait out the night. I just had to wait for this blood moon or lunar event to end. I can't sleep tonight. I started the morning to an assassin creeper, which luckily didn't kill me. At this point, I just wanted to return home. I went around and made sure I had all the items I wanted to take. I took the safe way down from the village and then began to run home. I ran past some buildings and areas that definitely would have been nice to loot, but there's no point with a full inventory. I made it back to base safe and sound and got organized and then finally made a bucket. The perfect water bottle and MLG tool. I went and cleared up the harpies and next to the house so that the gatekeeper is safe and then planted some saplings around the house. I'm out of wood. I looked up on Google today where to find the Goblin King, since I feel like I should have found his castle already. And well, apparently it's underground. Yep. So I went back into the mines, went to one of the lowest points and began strip mining. I came upon this open cave area and didn't have any high hopes for it. Just some of the regular mobs in here and the goblin's castle will be huge with the lava. So it ain't looking good. I saw this dwarf blacksmith, but no other dwarfs here. Guess he's alone down here like me. Then I found this interesting room. I actually thought it would lead to somewhere, but no. It's just a random little stone room with some spawners placed around that I went and destroyed. I ran out of torches and I tried out that diamond shovel that can place them. It's supposed to lose durability whenever I do, however, but this one didn't. I checked out the chest, they're pretty normal, just weapons and armor like usual, and the second chest had a claymore, which I happily took. I didn't see any doorways or paths that led anywhere, so I went back to my strip mining spot and got back to work.
until I heard some voices in the wall and found this little goblin. I tickled his toes, looked around, but there was nothing. Night was here, so I just went back up and went to sleep. I got organized and prepared to go mining again, went around and chopped some of the trees, was a good homeowner really, and then went back down into the mines to hopefully find the goblin king. Until my pick broke and I didn't want to punch stone. I headed back home and was going to get ready to go right back to mining until I heard the door break and some zombies enter the home. I quickly went looking for them and found a boss in the bedroom. The gatekeeper helped me out, I believe, and I learned really fast how strong he is. Also, how strong Ratatouille is. Him and his entire family came and wanted to eat my toes. They're incredibly hard to hit, unlike the zombie who spawned in the furnace room and surprised me. And thankfully, gatekeeper didn't help me out at all. I guess he was scared. Almost as scared as these rocks when they saw me walking towards them with a pick. And boom! I thought it was a Goblin King castle at first. Then my hopes were shattered. It's that same weird energy battery structure. I made a staircase up a little bit and instantly some wither skeletons came over to give me a warm welcome. Once the entire area was cleared, or I thought it was cleared, I lit it up and went to the chest. Then a new achievement popped up. I guess this was a trap all along. I kept hearing this deep dark breathing and my loot goblin hands took over and I looted the chest quickly. I'll look at it later. I went over to the cave opening and lit up the entrance. I still can't see what's making that noise, but I want to see what it is. A creeper blocked the door and things were spawning in. That's when I saw a massive monster walk past the doorway. Every couple of seconds, I would hear it hit something and the ground would start moving. Then these husks would spawn in. So I have to quickly get rid of the big boy so the little boys wouldn't spawn in. That sounded weird. Luckily, it doesn't do much damage to me and I hit it fairly hard. I wanted to focus it, but enemies were coming from all directions. So I picked a room and made my way in, slaying everything in there and then quickly getting rid of the spawner. There were two chests in the cave room, but I had to loot them slowly. Nothing special in them. Now for the boss, which is a mutant husk. He does around a heart and a half of damage on me, but I deal around 15 to 20 damage to him. I just have to be careful about what he spawns in. I killed him off with some crossbow shots and a final hit from my claymore. Battle was over, right? Well, no. He regained his health for some reason and popped back up. I went right back in and awkwardly poked him. He noticed I was there and fought back. I killed him a second time and then focused on killing the husk in front of me. Then to keep it on brand, he regained his health. I ran out so I wouldn't be trapped and I was contemplating on leaving. What's the point of staying if he can't die? But I didn't want to give up. I went back in, did the exact same thing, killed the little husk right next to him and he regained his health again, this time at half HP but it looked like he was slowly doing more damage to me, and my armor is almost broken, again. So I just went back to the entrance. I took care of some husk and decided to leave. Maybe I'll come back and try to kill him again, but the mutant husk just seems invincible, and I also don't want to lose my armor. At this point, I really don't want to be underground anymore. I just want to explore, see other dungeons and bosses. Even though I can't find the Goblin King, there's other dimensions and stuff to do as well. So I headed out another direction and found some goblins to tease. I took care of the violent ones in the camp and then looked around at all their tiny buildings. The only chest in this place was, uh, had items, and I was going to continue exploring until I realized this is a jungle with poisonous enemies, and I'd rather mine bedrock with my fists than encounter more of these. And on top of that, there's fairies that robbed me and then made me break my claymore. So I just decided to cut my losses short and head back home. I'm still going to explore, but now I won't be coming back here. I started this mod pack with exploration in mind, and I did a lot of stuff around this house, but it's time to move on to a farther place and get back to my original goals. I woke up with the sounds of rain leaving and then got to work. I went through all of my chests and picked up all of the items I wanted to take with me. Mainly stuff that was really valuable or that I thought would be useful. Gatekeeper came to the door and said goodbye to me and then I headed off. Since I know the area straight ahead is pretty open and clear and also doesn't have dragons or poisonous enemies, just to keep you on track, I got my strength to level 15. Still the only stat I'm putting my levels into. I made it back to that one swamp area that had the witch's hut and made my way to another building thing. It actually had good loot inside of it, so I spent a little bit getting geared up and went back to swimming. Night fell and this place was a lot more massive than I thought. As soon as I reached land, I slept. When I woke up, I looked around and I thought those were the same jungle walls from that one place with fairies flying around it. I don't know if you remember it. I'm also terrific at explaining, I know. Almost as terrific as finding dragons, which lit me on fire and I immediately ran into poison ivy. I tried to see where this thing was, but apparently dragons are also invisible in this world. So I ran to this thick forest area with massive stone walls to lose it. And 
it surprisingly worked, but it just had to light me on fire one last time. I continued quickly through the area so the dragon couldn't fly over and reach me. I made it to a flower meadow and then ran into a wheat factory. If the dragon came over that forest, I was hoping it would be occupied with this place instead of me. Up next, I found Shrek's hut and something lit me on fire while trying to enter. My heart sank because I thought it was a dragon, so I quickly broke the carpet where the trap door is and went down. If it was a dragon, at least I'm safe down here. And I'm even safer now that I got this second golem kit. Now I won't be worried to use it. <laughs> I went back up and sprinted through the door. I didn't want to look around. I went across the river to this cool villager place. A nice distraction area, if you will, in case something bad comes. There wasn't anything in this village. I just really enjoyed the look of it and the surrounding areas. Until I broke this wall and fairies were here. And to make it even worse, I'm carrying all of my valuables. So everything they're stealing from me, I need. At this point, I was incredibly close to looking through the modelist and removing them. Really didn't want to deal with them anymore. But after almost dying to a creeper, I just had to bite the bullet and cut my losses. I just headed out of the forest before I lost more items. Coming up to this big house, but I didn't feel like looting it. I just wanted to keep moving until I found some massive dungeon or floating village again. No, no, I, I said dungeon or floating village, not another dragon. Which I also didn't see at first, and it really enjoyed lighting me on fire. I ran past this beautiful Asian-inspired building, hopefully the dragon would get occupied with it or something, and ran into this troll village. Which a troll spawned right in front of me. After dealing with it and then leaving its tent, there was the dragon, within kissing distance. I quickly jumped into the river and went straight for the floor. I began to dig a hole like usual and plugged it above me. I dug down until I entered this tiny cave pocket and just got relaxed for a little bit in here. After waking up and making sure I was all healthy, I got to mining, the safest way away from a dragon. I didn't travel too far, just want to get a little bit away so I could sprint. Also, I wasn't hearing the dragon so, I figured I was somewhat safe. But I still hightailed it out of there. I went across the river into a pumpkin patch. I thought I heard Starbucks in the distance again and ran through this blue forest. Then I saw that a python boss popped up. I thought that was bad until a second python boss popped up while traveling through this jungle. I made it to the edge and jumped into a river. But of course, danger was here too. Right as I was almost at the edge of the river, a killer whale nearly grabbed me. He wanted to play, but but his type of playing and my type of playing are completely different. Oh, and yeah, harpies. Anyways, I traveled a bit more and finally, as the sun was setting, finally something that didn't want to kill me. I found this little cute village house and finally was able to rest. I looked around and didn't see any danger, at least for now. I woke up to the villager judging me and quite frankly, making this place feel awkward and really uninviting. So I went around looting up all the houses, checking out the village, pooping in their cereal, you know, the usual. Once I went through all the houses, I went to the water to say hi to the local endermen. I didn't ask, but I felt like the villagers didn't really want them here. And then, once they were gone, I looked to the right and, well, there's that. Um, I think it belongs in Subnautica, but who knows? And I totally would have loved to have gone up to it, but I had to go get this one thing in the other direction, so I left the monster there. I traveled for a short while, and then in the distance, I saw a floating village. Hopefully a perfect spot for a base. But I didn't see any waterfalls leading up there, so I chopped down some trees until I felt like I had enough planks to get up there. Now, the pleasing building part. Once getting up here, I placed my water bucket down so I could swim up and got to looking around. I didn't do much of that because I know the loot will just be iron, like the last one, and then I found this nice house in the corner of the place, which honestly will make a really nice base for now. And since I'm so high up, I can see everything around here. I saw some nether building spot, and then a massive fantasy platform looking place with giant mushrooms. Definitely a place I want to visit and conquer, and possibly test out some iron golems. The other places around here look like some villager buildings, a graveyard, and a suspicious Greek temple along the ocean. Before taking on that cool looking fantasy place, I went around the floating village and looted the chests. I also stole the chests and brought them over to the house spot that I took over. You know, save wood and just steal their chests to store my stuff. Capitalism at its finest. Once the chest situation was all done, there really wasn't anything else that happened up here. With it being daytime, you know what, we'll just call that place tree trunk. I don't know, it sounds fitting. But I got a good look at tree trunk. I'm sure I'm strong enough and tanky enough to take it on, but something was telling me to go look around at the other buildings here first, see if I could get stronger items. So I went to the nether building, got some cool armor and some tools, nothing I'd use though. I then went to that spider white box and tore into the corner, which the chest had absolutely nothing that would be useful. And lastly for today, the villager houses. The first house was pretty average, just a normal building with some food items on the second floor. The second house was 
was a lumber place with an awesome sawmill that I stole. It's like a stone cutter, but for wood. And then the third building was just some prison for a villager, but at least he's safe in there. Then I found tomorrow's adventure. There's these long chimneys tubes, uh, just some long pathways with campfires at the bottom. I tore into a separate one and it has a ladder leading to the bottom. I woke up in the morning to Tracy judging me, and I swear I heard her singing a song and saying that's not my name. After that I went back to the chimney thing and went down the ladder. I was expecting some kind of boss fight or dungeon. Makes sense, right? Well, apparently it's just some tiny village. There's little homes all around this tree and then I saw some government leaders, ah, uh, uh, some lizard people. Just really tiny people. It kind of confused me. I saw to the walls and they never noticed me. I looked on their chest, but all there was was some food and coal. The entire time, the lizard people never moved at all. Just turned a little. I was getting weirded out by them, so I went for the attack. I also figured they were going to be hostile. They moved fast and did a little bit of damage. The weird part was that they sounded human as I hit them. I looked around and didn't see any doorways or pathways leading somewhere, so I just went up the ladder and saw this house right next to me. I heard some pillagers and then felt their arrows, so I got to work. Once they were both done, I went around and looted the graves in the backyard. Surprisingly, they actually had decent loot inside of them. A pretty good place to visit if I were still on day one. Then I found this open grave with a skeleton and once it felt too illegal looting all the graves, I found this open spot with coal barrels, with their skeletons on the ground and some other stuff. On the side of the building were some villagers and terrible chests. Once I felt like I checked the entire surrounding area, I headed to the front door. Once getting butt head out of the way, there was an armor stand that looked like it was placed there to spook off intruders. The living room area looked old, the carpet was torn up, also torn up by me, but there were no lights. Some cobwebs in the kitchen area next to this room was bloody. There was a stone cutter, but I don't think it was used for stone. The floor was filled with blood. I found a little hidden entrance next, but I heard a traveling villager outside and I went to collect my free leads. Once I was collected, I returned to the hidden entrance. I cautiously went down and it was pitch black. Even a torch didn't help. Going down the stairs led to an iron door, then a trail of blood leading to the next room. Whoever owned this house obviously wasn't a superhero. I broke through the next door and I entered some lab. I tried my best to light up the place, but again, torches didn't do much. The previous owner left all of his or her best loot down here and I made sure to take it all. Well, whatever I could carry. Then I hit the lever. I kept hearing villagers through this door the entire time and I was worried it was going to be the owner. But no, it was two villagers trapped behind some iron bars. I broke them out and then heard some zombies. I think I triggered a trap and I slowly crept back to the entrance, never seeing any enemy. I had to mind my way up since one of the ladders was missing. Upon returning to the living room, I heard pillagers. The place was surrounded. I looked through a window and saw a villager hiding and didn't see any pillagers. I was going up the stairs when I heard a summoning noise. It reminded me of the wither, but I didn't hear one. I was panicking and rushed up the stairs, lighting up the walls and then I opened the door to him. A jump scare. Maybe the previous owner, but who knows. He charged me and the fight was rapid. I killed him in three hits. I checked through the door and there were no more outside in the spot, so I went back and went to the attic. I lit it up and looked through all the chests, but it was just terrible. Just bones, leather, and other useless items. I went back down and looked through some more rooms, but I found nothing until I opened that same door and found another one of those mysterious enemies. This fight went the same way, but he was a lot quicker, making my heart race. After that fight, I just went to the bedroom and slept until morning. I crept around slowly through the house and I wasn't hearing any pillagers or enemies. They all just left. I went out the side entrance and I checked out some surrounding buildings and made my way to that watchtower. I found an iron golem trapped in this wooden box. I don't know how he can't break wood, but I did try and free him until this ax somehow accidentally hit him and lit him on fire. I don't want to take any chances, so I just left him in there. I found my way through some of the pillagers around the tower and made my way inside. I was kind of surprised with how few there were and I tried to loot chests as I said hi to them all, but the first floor was proving to be too much of a hassle, so I went up the stairs, played patty cake with this dude, and then the worst happened. My inventory was full. I couldn't loot anymore, so I quickly skipped all the way back to my base and put away everything and then headed back. Good news is, now I can steal even more. The pillagers were coming in hot, kind of weird, and since I have two iron golem totems, I decided to use it and the durability is insanely high. And thank God I used it. Just wow, look at him go. Just moving around so rapidly, killing them all. So proud. Especially when I broke the floor for it to move and he sprinted over to hug the tree. Brought a tear to my eye. They grow up so fast. While he handled the tree, I went upstairs and began looting. I got this weird ender eye and went to the top floor. I tried to take on the pillagers up here, but one of them is a boss. And he sprints faster than my dad to get some milk and does more damage than NFTs. So I bravely brought
brought him down to my iron golem and had him deal with him. Night fell and I was heading home until I saw this 15 foot tall werewolf. No, I won't get closer so you can see it. I, I'm good. And I just returned home. I want to make sure that I take on all of the buildings and sites around here before the tree trunk. And nothing was really catching my eye, except for the Greek temple. I assessed and creeped my way down and headed over. Before entering though, of course, something had to happen. Seagulls, the trash cans of the world, and these dirt bags just had to take my golden apples. Couldn't have gone for my bread like every other bird, and if I don't kill them fast enough, they eat them. So yeah, basically fairies, but these are a lot worse. I couldn't land any arrows on them, so before I lost all of my golden apples, I just went inside. I went around with my god shovel that doesn't lose durability when placing torches and lit up the place. There were levers everywhere, so I touched them all as one shouldn't do, and this little staircase opened up. Instead of heading down, I tore up the floor so my iron golem could go down there first. However, right when I was going to place him, something went off. All of my armor broke and I sprinted outside. I lost all urges to go down there and returned back to my base. I saw two seagulls at my door, so I finally got my revenge and put on some new armor that for some reason gives me tatas? And I know, I know, we all want to see me go to the tree trunk and fight, but there's one last area I want to go to, a graveyard. I want to see all of my past enemies and I also know that there has to be some good loot there. And once I went to the giant white grave, I was correct. A lot of golden items in there, a golden apple, oh, and a totem of undying, you know, nothing special. I'm incredibly happy I came here before the tree trunk. Just to not drag this out, I went around to all the graves and looted up some items. And then I went to the center building and saw nothing in there. Once I heard some police sirens and it felt like I did way too many illegal things in here, I ran back to my base, got organized, and finally, I'm ready for the tree trunk base. I took the phone away down the waterfall and found this strange zombie in the bushes playing peekaboo with me. Their first scout. I'm dealing with smart enemies now. I first scouted out the area to see if there was an easy way in or if I had to climb up, and then I found a convenient staircase going up. I made it to what seems to be the front door, and I placed down a golem to help. There were so many enemies inside that they blocked each other from leaving the gate, kind of. Once the iron golem and I dealt with the first wave, I moved inside and began lighting up the place. I'm going to try and spawn proof the entire tree trunk. The place is filled with luckily just zombies and skeletons. Some bosses too, but the golem is handling them pretty well. While he kills, I light up the walls. The first floor had nothing, just some coal barrels and a few chests. The second floor, weirdly enough, had no enemies at all and terrible loot again. However, it's improving as I go higher. The third floor was the same story, very strangely, no enemies here. Now the chests on the other hand were getting incredible. Lots of ores, armors, tools, and this thing called a coin dragon. I have absolutely no idea what it is or what I should do with it. I went to the staircase leading up and cleared out the ceiling to make it so my iron golem could walk up. Then found out it was all for nothing because the booger can just teleport. The fourth floor had some action, just a couple of zombies, and I focused on lighting up the place. Also smacked the zombie off the edge because I couldn't resist. The fifth floor was the same story, blah blah blah, and took a lot of torches to light it up, no good loot. It started to rain however, and I'm in love with it. Oh, and the golem somehow died. I don't know how, there's no enemies on this floor. And I just waited for the golem totem to cool down so I could spawn in another one. While waiting, I went to the chest here and the loot was getting incredible. Felt wrong taking it all because this was so incredibly easy to take on. And finally, the top floor. I spawned in the golem and this floor had all the baddies. The rain really set the mood and I tried to focus on lighting up the place, but there were so many of them. I had to fight for once, but I still tried to light up the place because I was watching them respawn. I finished up the torch run and miraculously, the golem lived. The area was cleared out and there was a lot of chests up here with way too much loot in them. This place is incredibly generous and luckily I have a backpack to help me loot it all. I'll check it all out later. I just wanted to grab everything. The second chest up here also had a crazy amount of loot. It was like I just killed the hardest boss in all of Minecraft. Once that was all done and my pockets weighed over 12 tons, I saw this lighter and on top was just this natural landscape. I lit it up and while doing so, I kept on hearing zombies. I figured there has to be some hidden room. That makes sense. Except when I went digging around and trying to find it, I couldn't find the zombies. I went looking around today, but the only areas that had any left were downstairs. I slowly made my way down and I guess I didn't spawn proof as well as I thought. Especially around the staircase. I won't show everything that happened, it's all basic and repetitive. Repetitive, but I did find this tripwire thing that had a piston move, which didn't do anything. So I was confused by it. The only areas left were around the sides and on these mushroom tips. I just went around, lit them up, killed the enemies, and the loot was mediocre until I went to this elevator carrying a chest and inside a second backpack. I'm so happy I decided to take on this tree trunk. Fast forwarding again, the place was completely done. No big boss or hidden secrets, but it was a fun time taking it on. I went back home and it took me almost all night to get completely organized. 
guys. I gathered a ton of items and at night, the tree trunk all lit up looked beautiful. Given how I can't find the Goblin King at all, I don't want to spend all my time trying to find him. I'm just going to try out the other content in this mod pack. And there's a ton. A lot of different dimensions and one that caught my attention is the Twilight Forest. If you're a longtime viewer of me, you'll remember this place from my 200 days in modded Minecraft video. Also, how I never completed it. I got stuck trying to get to the Hydra, and now I want to see if I can complete it all. Or at least fight some bosses. So I know you need flowers around an infinite water pool and to throw a diamond in there to open the portal, but these are all modded flowers. I wanted to see if they'd still work, and no, I need vanilla flowers, or leaves according to Google. So I went around, collected two stacks of leaves, and then redid the portal with them. I tossed in a diamond and it actually worked. Before jumping in, I pushed in the golem to see if it would teleport, but no, I'll just have to respawn him in there. I also want to be completely ready, so I spent the rest of the night preparing and then headed to bed. I did a sick 360 for luck and teleported into the twilight forest, or the void? Everything immediately went black. I could only see two blocks ahead of me and heard some scary noises, so I bravely sprinted straight back home. The blindness went away and yep, we got a problem. I ate a golden apple for some protection and jumped back in. I placed down an iron golem to help me out and placed some torches to see if they'd help out. Nope, they don't. I tried to see if I could find my way out and maybe see. But then a creeper spawned in and I tried to see where it was coming from. The creeper's also named Air for some reason and I killed it. A couple seconds later, man, I got a book. I spawned in a fortress, one of the late game ones. So yeah, I went back to the overworld and I can't close the portal. So I placed dirt over it to prevent any accidents. I got another diamond and some leaves and headed about 200 blocks away from my base. Should be far enough, hopefully. I got rid of some endermen around this area, got the portal all set up, and then tossed a diamond in there with the iron golem right there. It lit on fire and it caused everything else to catch on fire. I tried to put it out, but then the iron golem smacked me and then teleported to the twilight forest. I I figured he would attack me as I entered, so I ate another golden apple, went through, and bad news, the portal's linked. I'm at the same area. I teleported back home and came through the portal that I closed off. Two diamonds wasted now, so I prepared for a third portal. I'll travel farther this time. I went down the fun water slide again and headed out. This time, I'll make sure the portals don't link, I hope. I'm assuming it's like the nether portal system where they'll link no matter what until you go a certain distance. I found this jungle temple, but I wanted to get out of the jungle fast, except it was never ending, and it was more of leaves than jungle. But I reached a river and I was about 750 blocks away from my base. There's no way this isn't far enough, right? I made the portal, got my iron golem totem ready, and did a 360 into the twilight forest. I immediately stepped in poison ivy, but look! We're not blind for once, except the sky looks weird and my graphics are freaking out. So I turned off my shaders. It'll be vanilla while we're in here. So it's been about a year since I played this mod and I somewhat remember how to play in here. There's this force field on this wizard tower. It's the second boss. I first need to go find the Naga and kill it. It's in a giant maze and easy to spot. I actually found it about 200 blocks away. So I ran up to the wall, broke in, and it's on. The Naga is a giant snake. Well, it's supposed to be. This one is for some reason a head, but I noticed that the body was there, just invisible. It would still hurt me and the golem, and if I swung where the body should be, it gets hurt. Also, the iron golem was incredible for attacking it. I tried to actually fight it. The snake barely did any damage to me, but the thing was too fast and the iron golem actually did a ton of damage. So, um, the first boss is done. I put the trophy in my special inventory and headed back to the wizard tower. At this rate, it'll take me a few days to beat this dimension. I arrived at the wizard tower and ran around the entire thing to see if I could find an entrance. But but there wasn't one. I mined into the wall and came into a small library. I went through a doorway and lit up some of the ground, but the special service skeleton edition dropped down and immediately attacked me. I ran back to my entrance and just waited for them to funnel through. Once they stopped, I plopped the iron golem down and let it get to work. As he handled the enemies, I focused on the lighting and spawners like usual. The perfect duo. The staircase were endless. This skeleton was also halfway through the ground. I hit it and then got some achievements. Just wanted to show that. And after 72 flights of stairs, I made it to the top. I killed the skeletons guarding the opening and rushed some torches down. I was in the lighting mood. In the past, I vaguely remember that I needed to hit something back at this boss to get rid of the shields, but it wasn't going according to my memory. Nothing I was swinging at would return to them, and then I got hit by a semi-truck, down to two and a half hearts. I rushed back down the staircase to heal up, obviously, and then I returned with the iron golem. Somehow, it was removing their shields, but it died sadly, leaving all the work to me. I smacked the real lich, and one of its shields disappeared. For some reason, I can just damage it. 
I guess I was remembering a different boss or it got updated? Anyways, I removed its shields and I was hitting harder than Mike Tyson. I killed the Lich in 5 or 6 hits and the second boss was dead on day 1 of the Twilight Forest. After that I went around a good chunk of the building to see if I could get some more loot, but it's not really important to show for the story. It was just a long journey of checking out the same rooms basically, except remember this for later. This dungeon can spawn in fire resistant potions. Also wanted to leave this building because the zombie noises were driving me insane. Oh, oh, oh. After speaking to the zombies in their language, I found my entrance and left. For the third boss, I need to find a swamp, which I saw a corner of one in the minimap, so I headed over there. The third boss is a mushroom minotaur thing. It spawns on a hill, like this one, that I found immediately. Last year, this took me like three or four days to find. Once you enter this dungeon, you can't break any blocks, so I can't cheese through this maze dungeon sadly. I collected some dirt to go down the holes, and then I heard some of the enemies, or a Mustang driver hitting a crowd. Uh, either way, it's bad news and I began my dirt staircase into the dungeon. I placed it on the iron golem hoping it would fall down because I know there's a lot of enemies in this lobby. But it spun in the wall of course. Once he finally fell down, he got to work. I heard a lot of fighting and let him do his thing for like 20 seconds. Once it sounded like all the work was done, I water bucketed my way down and began to light up the lobby as much as I could. All the enemies noticed I came down and wanted my autograph. I found one of the cowboys. I keeps making the Mustang noise. This is just a fight club, but I'm not allowed to speak about it. I began to move out and got jump scared by the iron golem. This is a very common reoccurrence down here, just like all of these corners and turns. And I don't want to bore you. So I'll just give you the spark notes about what happens down here because it's super repetitive and long, just like your forehead. Uh, I'm sorry again. So yeah, I came into this four pillar room, broke the spawners and a huge thing in these chests are the steel leaf and iron wood items. Very important and useful. Then came one of the hardest bosses I've ever fought in this mod pack, a regular cowboy boss. Not even the boss of this dungeon. This thing fought my iron golem for about a minute straight and killed it, then chased me back to the dirt stairs. I knocked it down and finally could summon my iron golem back in. But even then, the thing was winning. I ran in to help out the iron golem when I didn't have to worry about these flaming flying rats and the monster finally died and it dropped basically nothing just enchanting books but spoiler i never enchant once during this movie and got back to exploring which it was honestly just endless i came to this caved in room with an enchanted cowboy guarding it which honestly happened a lot i kept finding them just staring at walls and then letting them charge into my iron golem over four minutes later i finally found the entrance to the last floor the boss floor I spent a little bit of time getting prepared and then broke the iron bars. I would have to make my dirt staircase going down again. Once reaching the floor and lighting the place up, I walked into this big mushroom room. Nothing in it, and then a cowboy came. But let's skip all of this and get to the juicy part. I wasn't expecting to find the boss room so soon, but I finally did. It was being blocked by wooden fences, and I removed all of them except for the bottom row. I plopped down the iron golem and watched him do work, but I had to quickly get back because the mushroom boss actually hits hard. Surprised me with how much damage I took. The iron golem killed him in a few seconds, which I don't know how this boss was weaker than that one fire cowboy at the top floor. Was kind of underwhelming. I lit up the boss room and then went through the chest. Another spoiler, I really really wish I took these steel leaf ingots with me and some other items from these chests for later on. But I still remember those comments I got on my 200 days in modded minecraft video. I need to eat this mushroom stew. And I did. One year later, I can continue the twilight forest. I can now go and fight the hydra. And since it took me three diamonds to get into this dimension and it was annoying to do so, I'm going to beat the twilight forest now. But day 41 had better plans for me. Oh boy. Day 41. So, you know how I've been going through the Twilight Forest really fast? Well, things are about to change. So, since I ate that mushroom stew thing, I can now enter a fire swamp and kill the Hydra, which I saw a red spot on my mini-map and figured that was a fire swamp. So, I headed over and boom! Right away, I found the Hydra den. Hard to miss. As I was walking over, something was obviously off. Something wasn't right. Where's the Hydra? I didn't see it. And when I looked around, nothing was moving. I couldn't shoot arrows and my golem was frozen, so I restarted Minecraft. I figured my game was getting a little silly and goofy. Luckily, I didn't lose any progress. I just had a rerun to the fire swamp, which I did. I went back to the Hydra den and once again, same thing happened. 
This time I walked into the den and I saw a spawner, which I'm going to assume was a spawner for the Hydra. It was dark, so I lit the place up. I couldn't even break the spawner. And at this point, I was worried I would have to cheat and give myself the Hydra trophy. But I restarted Minecraft again, you know, third time's the charm. This time I was randomly laying down. I thought it was funny and never knew I could do this. Anyways, according to Google and some forums that I looked around in, this is a common problem with the Hydra. It corrupts your chunks and breaks your game. So I can't go to that fire swamp. Big no, no. So I set out to hopefully find another one. It wasn't too bad though. I can at least search for the next dungeons too and leave some waypoints at them. Like this spiky forest, which is the final boss. And I just spent the rest of today searching for over 15 minutes. If I find another fire swamp or don't find one in a few days, I might have to cheat in the Hydra trophy to continue on with the twilight forest. But I didn't want to get to that. I'm sure another Hydra spawn won't break my game. So I just ran and ran and saw a giant floating cloud, which is also a boss area for the end. But then, as I was thinking it's hopeless, not really, I'm just trying to make this part dramatic, I found it. I found a fire swamp, and after a little bit of running around, I found the Hydra Den. And this time, he was there and nothing was freezing. But uh, there's still an issue. I just can't put my head on it. I think the Hydra is getting ahead of me. It's just something to scratch your head about. Okay, I'm done. I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, there's no Hydra head, or heads. I lit up the cave to see if my eyes were just bad, but no. Also, hitting the body doesn't deal any damage, so I just play tango with it and smack the air. Sometimes hitting its head, and it seemed like I would beat this monster in 20 to 30 seconds. But then, at full HP, it bit me and popped my totem. I sprinted out of there so it couldn't bite me a second time, and now I'm actually scared to fight this headless hydra. The thing was healing up because I wasn't there, and I tried to spawn in the iron golem to see if it could fight the thing for me. It went how you thought, and then I went back to light up the cave again, but the troglodyte hydra wasn't having any of that. I did get the iron golem to go in, but that also went as well as you thought. I reloaded Minecraft to see if that would fix it, and no, it still didn't fix it. So I listened to Google on how to kill this thing. Apparently, smacking its balls back at it will kill it the fastest. I beg to differ. It did around 1% of damage to it, and to make it all worse, my armor is basically gone. I lost my chest plate and helmet to one of its balls, and I wasn't comfortable staying anymore. I needed a game plan. I went back to the swamp edges and made some steel leaf armor. Apparently, this stuff is incredibly good for the Hydra and later bosses. Oh yeah, this is apparently a frog. I just wanted to show you this. So getting back to the Hydra, I just wanted to see if anything would change. I placed down the golem to hopefully get it to distract the Hydra from me and just smacked wherever I could. But honestly, this is going nowhere. Hitting it is the worst output of damage. I need to smack its balls to make it hurt. And I'm still scared of dying in one hit. My strength is around 20 and my armor is incredibly high. So this thing is actually deadly. I went to the top to see if there's anything I could do and then learned that if I get a fire resistance potion and shoot its mouth right when it fires a fireball at me, it'll take a lot of damage and I won't take any. I didn't get any fire resistance potions from the loot bags in my backpack. I also checked some houses nearby, hoping they'd have at least one, but no, nothing. Then I remembered, do you remember back at the first wizard tower I found a fire resistance potion? No way I'm heading back to that first one, but I did find this tower. And if I'm lucky, I'll find another potion in here. Of course, it couldn't be simple and be in this first chest. Gotta make it interesting in here. I mined through the wall and into the staircase. Couldn't find any other way in. The golem said hi to Jack Skellington and it was the usual. Cleared out the bottom floor, the golem handled the baddies, and I focused on lighting up the staircase and removing spawners. I made it up to the boss and it was on. Except this time, the shields weren't going away and this thing did a lot more damage than I remembered. I went back to heal, obviously, and sent the iron golem in to see if he could do better, which he did. For some reason, the golem was able to remove the shields, just super slowly, and then my golem died. It was just me now while the totem was on cooldown. I hit every single shot on the boss and made quick work of it. The boss died and this is my second trophy from it now. Now for the exploring part and crossing my fingers. I went down the other staircase side and began checking every single room. I checked every corner, enemy quarters, you name it. I almost died in one area from a boss that pooped out poison and I was just not getting lucky at all. I was finding potions in some chests, which is a good sign, but I never found a fire resistance potion. And when I thought it was hopeless, the second to last room left in the building, I found it. A three minute fire resistance potion. I was so worried I would have to explore some more or head back to the first tower to get that potion. But I luckily didn't have to. I also remembered at this point that the Mushroom boss also had a lot of fire resistance potions in that entire maze. Uh, anyways, I headed back to the Hydra den. And there she is. 
the headless hydra right where i left her i ran up and drank the potion i got three minutes to kill this beast and weirdly enough even though i'm fire resistant now i took damage from fire actually almost died to it so i gotta play a little ways back now i was going for the strategy where you shoot the fireballs back into its mouth except i can't see its mouth or anything the only thing that i can go off on is the smoke animation and the fireballs so i had to focus on the open air for those and then quickly shoot them back and when i did these things did a massive amount of damage. I kept jumping left and right to avoid the ones on the floor, but over time, I lost my helmet. I had about 35 seconds remaining and I was getting a little nervous here, but it shot the final fireball and I smacked its ball right back at it and killed the Hydra. A tough boss fight that took a lot of preparation and it all paid off. Once the smoke cleared, I picked up the trophy in fiery blood vials. I can now enter the next dungeon. I got organized first, made some armor, and then headed off. Up next is the dark forest, a place I first teleported into when I made my first portal. Yeah, I can now go there and see. And after a little bit of traveling, took me like six minutes, I found it. So this dungeon is underground. Only way in is to find the entrance. Duh. Which I couldn't find for the life of me. I actually explored probably half of this forest and lit it up. Then I found the bricks and looked around and found this geode blocking the entrance. Was kind of a bad sign because I need to find a trophy pedestal, which is only at the entrance. And this thing ruined it. So I looked around the beginning area of the dungeon, but never found it. So maybe it's somewhere else in the dungeon or I'll find it later on. A super awesome thing with this dungeon currently is that I can't hurt any enemy or open any chest. So cool, right? So I have to actually use my iron golem for this entire place. All I did was run around and light up the pathways and then sprint back to the golems whenever a baddie spawned in. This is an interesting dungeon. I'm actually enjoying it. I just wish I could actually break stuff or kill enemies. I started off today with looking at a green shaft and got back to exploring. This place is just never ending. It's also incredibly repetitive, so I'll just give you the spark notes. I kept traveling lower, lighting up the rooms, and it looked like there was no end in sight. When I thought I reached the bottom floor, the dungeon proved me wrong. Then I somehow managed to spawn in two iron golems. I thought that was amazing until I somehow spawned in three iron golems with the one totem. Uh, I have a lot of iron, and since I can't fight, might as well keep them all alive and healthy. I've explored so much of this place that the dungeon stretches out farther than my minimap can see, and I was running out of places to explore. I came upon this iron bar area, and I figured this is where the boss has to be, except I can't get inside. The areas around this specific spot were also special, like this tall room where I tried to water bucket up and then lost my water, which I needed for drinking. So now I can die of dehydration in here if I don't finish this fast enough. Now with the time limit, I went back to where those iron bars kind of were and found this little leaf area with chests. Since I can't break it, I made a creeper follow me and then go boom boom on the chest chest, breaking most of them here. Was all right stuff, mainly some ores that I didn't know what to do with and little armor here and there. But I went back to searching for that pedestal, which I don't know why it's so hard to find, until I went back to the entrance. Yep, all the way back. And I went through this little hallway, which led to the pedestal. Could have found this like three days ago, but regardless, I took the Hydra trophy and placed it on the pedestal. The floor opened up and I tested it out. Yes, I can now break blocks in here. I took the trophy back, went up the stairs at the entrance, and then headed over to the river. Since I'm here, might as well drink some yummy river water and refill my bucket. I headed back inside and did a water bucket landing. I headed straight back to those iron bars next to the leaf area, broke the bars, and the Phantom Knight boss spawned in. With this one, it'll spawn in six versions of itself. One is real, but you need to beat them all. I first lit up the place, and I guess this boss is a lot weaker than I expected, because my two golems kill them all incredibly fast. The last one was in the ceiling, and I guess this boss is done with? I don't no, it was just kind of disappointing with how long it took to find this place. I looked in the chest and got some swords, helmets, and the Night Phantom trophy. I looked through their graves and there wasn't anything else for me to steal. Kind of an abrupt ending to this place, but there's something terrible. My inventory and two backpacks? They're full. Absolutely crushed me because we have so much more to do. However, I'm about 800 meters from the portal, so you could bet that I absolutely made the run back to the portal. Did an incredible 360 spin into it and... Ew, uh, the overworld is really ugly without shaders. I don't like it one bit. Ah, so much better. The shaders are definitely worth the FPS drop. With everything looking beautiful again, I headed back to the floating village home. Along the way, I found this dark looking ritual spot. I don't know what it's for, but it seems like a mod that could give me a lot of power. Anyways, I made it back to the floating village and I have a lot to get organized. I placed down the two backpacks and got to work, which took me until nighttime to finish. I spent a little bit of time looking around and then for the first time in like, like 10 days or something, I went to sleep. Before 
heading back, I noticed my armor was low and replaced some of it and grabbed some more from my backpack. I jumped down the old fun water slide and headed out. I ran past three giant endermen trying to snack on my cheeks and then did a 360 no scope YY ladder stall into the portal. I guess I didn't remove this poison ivy around my portal and didn't want my golems to die from it. I left a waypoint at the night phantom dungeon and headed back. According to the wiki, the next boss is the Yurgast, and its castle spawns above the dark forest. So I checked out the area around the night phantom place, but didn't see anything. Even going up this tree didn't help. And then it struck me. I need to be able to walk on leaves to get to this Yurgast dungeon, I think. And I can only walk through leaves, or else I would be on top of the forest running over it. But anyways, I began running around since I didn't see the next dungeon there. I came across this maze that I remember from a year ago, it's just filled with angry dogs and bad loot, so I didn't care to go through it. Running around, I thought I found the dungeon. I saw this nice stone archway and a tower in the background, but getting closer to it, no, it's just the second boss tower. One thing I want to start doing is Q&As whenever I'm running around or doing repetitive stuff, which I'm getting from my Discord server that you should join. It's in the description. What's your motivation? If you're talking about YouTube and why I do so much, it was a childhood dream to be where I am today. I disciplined myself to always work and never give up. I always thought, what if you were about to achieve your goal, but you quit one day before it and never achieved it? Why go through all of that effort and time and then give up? Make it all a waste. Plus, I like to achieve great things and always outdo my past self. I like to impress myself with my accomplishments. What was your favorite passion or hobby as a kid? I was completely into Halo and space. I absolutely loved everything about the game. I loved the books, loved space, and all the possibilities with it. I like to think that being into all of that stuff helped me turn into who I am today. Before getting back to the story, would you like me to continue segments like that? So after running around endlessly forever, I saw the giant Yeti cave, which I shouldn't be here until I kill the year gas, but might as well do it since it's here. I ran inside and was greeted with a flame Dracula flying into me. This entire cave is just filled with deadly creatures. I wander towards the middle to spawn in the giant yeti and there he is. Everything immediately turned hostile and got to fighting. Someone for me, someone for the giant yeti, it was great. I stayed back and kept shooting at where he was while the random baddies also fought him. He died fairly quickly and I ran in to grab his trophy. With this, I can go to the Aurora Ice Castle and fight the Ice Queen there, which I saw in the distance and headed over. I water bucketed my way up and strangely didn't see any penguins. I was hoping for a family reunion, but I guess they all left. I went to a wall of the building and broke in. I didn't find the front door, so I made my own. I was walking around the first rooms and hallway when I saw this giant enderman. Just because he can't reach me, I felt like fighting it. With them gone, I reached the room that gave me access to the rest of the tower, and my golems immediately started to suffocate in walls. This is foreshadowing the rest of the dungeon. The first couple of rooms was just me going up, no enemies, until I came into contact with the first one, a flying ice shooting thing that sometimes explodes when you kill it. It's a huge mess. I walked through the door and a boss was there that my golem really wanted to throw in the air and have fun with. I had two golems for this room, which they camped the doorway and it brought an eye to my tear. I just stayed back and watched them take care of both doorways. I thought that there might be a spawner in the room since this went on for a little bit. But no, no spawners, just a lot of enemies. The remaining rooms heading up were all parkour, which I managed to complete them all seamlessly and never fell. The chests were slowly obtaining better loot, especially this room's one which gave me a pretty enchanted bow, and a chest plate better than the one I was wearing. But since I went through such a long dungeon recently, I really didn't want to spend long in here. I went back to the entrance and water bucketed my way up to the closest roof. After going up a tiny bit more, I bridged to a wall and began to mine into it. But this place was thicker than a bowl of oatmeal, and I knew there wasn't going to be a room in it, so I went back and water bucketed up even more. Once reaching the roof, I broke through and instantly got into the room. I saw there was an upstairs, so I went to check it out because why not? And it just had a chest. The boss room obviously had to be below, right? So I began to mine down, go through some other rooms, fought some enemies, then found this wooden pillar in a different room and went up it. I got jump scared by both iron golems upon reaching this floor and all I found were some more weapons and armor pieces in this chest. Then after a while, I mined through a wall to find a lot of enemies, got rid of them all, and then I finally hit the room. There were icy platforms leading up and I remember that this was the beginning to the boss's room. I killed the only enemy on this floor and made my way to the second one. I'm guessing every single enemy in this place was waiting here because there were several bosses and a couple of enemies, which nearly killed me about two times. I teleported my golems up here and let them get to work. I cleaned it up and I went on to the third floor and repeated what I did. Then I reached the boss floor. She spawned in and I took care of the enemies. She disappeared until I looked up. I don't know. This entire time she just floated up there for like a minute. I was really confused. 
I'm confused. Then she started pooping out snow and the battle was on. She smashed into the floor, creating some holes and the golem started to hit her. I tried to hit her too, but I didn't deal any damage. Then we went right back to waiting for her to do something. This process repeated itself the entire boss fight. It was really lackluster. At the end, I fell through one of her holes and when I came back up, the iron golem finished her off. The boss fight was over. I got her trophy and it was just a calm ending. But I don't want a calm ending, so I took the fun way down and jumped off the castle. I got my water bucket ready and almost missed it at the floor, barely pulling off the MLG water bucket. I was just about to hop down the glacier when I saw them. For some reason, they were all inside of each other. Kind of weird. But it's been a year and I finally got to see my family again. I hopped down after that heartwarming interaction and now to get back to finding the Urgast. Once that boss is done, we'll be on to the final one. I just need to find a dark forest. In the meantime, what would be your advice to people trying to start a YouTube channel? So I mean this with a lot love and not to be rude. Don't start one expecting yourself to be huge and become one of the big YouTubers. There's hundreds of millions of people on YouTube, majority of which want to become a YouTuber. So don't start a channel expecting to make it big. Start one because you actually enjoy making videos. You enjoy cinematography and movies. Also, don't do what other people do. No one can be PewDiePie except for PewDiePie. Same with Mr. Beast, Green, Mumbo Jumbo, even me. People want something new. If I wanted to watch something like Mr. Beast, I'd go watch Mr. Beast beast. People's time is also valuable. Don't disrespect it by uploading lazy videos. If you wouldn't watch it or can't sit through it, why should other people online do it? Find what you're good at. Don't try and be good at something you're not. People will enjoy it more if it comes naturally to you. Now, uh, back to the story. I found another dark forest and was lighting it up. Then remembered, it's easier to see a castle in the sky if you're above the tree lines. So I went up and didn't see anything over here. I then traveled forward a little bit, built up, and then turned up my render distance. Don't know why I didn't do this earlier. I'm not using shaders in here. And after a little bit of looking around, the castle popped into view. I found the Urgast. While I was celebrating, the rest of the castle loaded in. This is a big boy. I water bucketed down and headed over to the building. I lit up the floor and luckily, this dungeon actually had a door. A really sick one in fact. You right click it and the blocks disappear and then reappear later on. It's also really good for suffocating iron golems. The hallways in here are incredibly tiny and you can't see far. There's also no enemies here and I was on high alert. It was all too quiet. I went up the stairs and walked into this maze, which had endless disappearing doors. I found this double chest that I was certain was trapped. It wasn't. It had some amazing ores and some cake slices called Experiment 115. I didn't dare eat it. I walked through the maze and came to the end. A staircase leading up, which had a skeleton waiting, but I was prepared with my iron golem. The next section was parkour, and I had to climb up a ladder to some beams. A deadly assassin skeleton got the drop on me. It was a close fight, and... Now I know what I'm in store for. There were spawners all throughout the place, which never spawned anything. Or it did, and they were all at the top because there's baby gas? I was stunned, but took them down with my crossbow. I'm guessing those are mini your gas. After the parkour section, it was the blaze area, a troublesome area. The golem handled the beginning for me, but I couldn't find the blaze spawners, which I desperately wanted to get rid of. The golem and I were constantly being lit on fire, killing blazes, but they kept on respawning. I found one of the spawners, but it didn't stop the onslaught. Slot. And at some point, I just had to run. The room was catching on fire and burning down. My armor was also burning down, so I just left. The room I went into was destroyed. Majority of it missing, and it looked like the blazes were at fault. I went out onto a platform and began to water bucket my way up. I wouldn't mind taking on this entire castle, but hey, why not just skip it all and water bucket my way to the top? Then they spawned in. The bigger gas. They immediately lit me up and I tried to snipe them, but instead just went back down. I found a chest in this room with amazing ore and some more freaky cake. Since my inventory was getting full, I spent the rest of today getting organized. I walked back out onto the roof cautiously and thought the gas left, but as soon as I noticed the one in the background, he noticed me. We both began shooting at each other and I started to target his balls. I missed the first ball and the second one I hit back made contact. As he died, I smacked his third ball back. He should see a doctor. I knew more would come, so I had a small amount of time to act. I wanted to go up quicker, so I got my bucket ready, looked at the wall, and jumped.
I missed the water up there, but luckily the water I used about three minutes ago was on the ground, saving my life. I waited for the water to reach the ground and began to swim up. I made it back to where I first placed water and then began to climb the rest of the way up, somehow not having any gas shoot at me. I made it to the platform and looked around. This boss wouldn't be inside. It has to fly around and it's massive, just like this W I'm about to get. So the only place I made sense for the boss was at the top. I began to water bucket up and the gas spawned in. They began to shoot me and I tried to outswim their shots. At at one point, they began shooting up at me, and then they stopped. I reached the top of the castle and immediately the your gas spawned in. The thing took up my entire screen and began shooting me immediately. I ran under the part of the ceiling that wasn't destroyed and then I fired. The boss was so unbelievably loud I had to turn down my audio or else I would go deaf from this fight. Loudest thing I've ever heard in Minecraft. Once I was fixed I was shooting it however it wasn't taking damage. So I thought while it was crying it was immune to damage. So I began to explore some of the rooms around here. See if there was anything in them. And there were these strange boxes with tiny gas pumping red farts into them. If I kill the babies, then the machine makes a noise, and if I step on this pressure plate, nothing happens. But I left a piece of bread on it to keep the thing triggered. I went over to the room to the right and did the exact same thing. It looks like there's four of these to do, but as I went to the third room, I killed enough gas for the machine to go green and make noise. But as I stepped on the pressure plate, nothing happened. So I left bread here too. I went to the final room and there were a ton of gas and a mini boss in here. The iron golem came to the rescue and took care of them. I did the same thing to this machine and now all four are covered and activated. I got to shooting and everything went the exact same way. I I did no damage and I didn't know what to do. After a minute of that, I just looked up on Google and well, I kind of got things right, but not really. So what you're supposed to do for the most damage is to go to each room and kill baby gas until the machine turns green. Then you stand on the pressure plate and the big boy gas will get stuck over it and take a lot of damage like that. So I went to all rooms, picked up the bread and got to work on saying hi to the babies. The third room was ready and the big boy gas took a lot of damage. This went on for a little bit and another thing, if you don't they hide to the babies fast enough, the big boy gas can be a weirdo and eat them, healing up. So I had to keep running to rooms ahead of it and say hi to the babies before it could eat them. This is all stuff I never thought I would say. Don't really know how to take it all in. <laughs> but uh, slowly over time, it kept healing up. I kept shooting it with alien beams of unalive babies and then with the final room, I hit it with a beam. It was almost dead and I began to snipe it down. I was worried it would heal so I crossed my fingers and shot it. Three shots later and the your gas died. Honestly, my favorite boss so far. We're now now onto the end game. One last boss, sort of. So I went to the chest in the center that spawns in after you kill the ear gas. I got the trophy, some Dracula snacks, and fiery tears. I placed a water bucket at the end, and since we're so high up, I have to wait a few minutes for it to hit the ground. So I sat around and got my strength to level 23, still the only skill I put anything into. I made another helmet and some armor for the future. Since two more pieces are about to break, then I picked up the water source and jumped. I was sailing straight to the ground, and as I was reaching the bottom, a gas came came back and just had to fire at me. And then I realized I'm landing straight on some leaves that I'm going to fall through. Luckily, my ankles broke the fall for me. The next objective is in a boss. More of two things I need to go collect for the final boss. I have to head back to that giant's cloud I found earlier, sit down dweeb, and get a giant's pickaxe for the second area. Since the cloud is super high up, duh, I need some building material to reach. I went over to this massive tree and began to chop my way up. Finally reaching the peak, I lined myself up to the edge of the cloud, so I just have to build straight up to it. The second I reached the top, I immediately wanted to head back down. There were giant me's up here. Absolute beautiful sight, and I was just starstruck at this point. Just peak penguin performance up here, baby. Enough drooling over myself, I need to kill one of these giants. Which isn't hard, it just takes a lot of arrows. I need one of their pickaxes, and a sword wouldn't be too bad. Their equipment is stronger than normal stuff. Once I finally killed some, I ran around the whole place to pick it up. It's easier that way, and I wanted to do more. But these things are just too tanky. It's like they're giants. So I went back to my wooden pillar and placed down some water. We'll be taking the easy way out and after a couple of seconds, I jumped. I was worried the entire time that they would try and follow, but luckily none of them did. Now that I have a giant's pickaxe, I need to find the obsidian vault, which is located underground in a troll cave, which I think I found one back in the dark forest area. I made it to the cave opening and slowly made my way down. A sign that you're in the troll cave is some block called Trollstein. It lights up purple based on how much sunlight it's receiving, but the lower I went in this cave, 
believe, I wasn't seeing any signs of Trollstein or the Obsidian Vault. Plus, there's a lot of creepy enemies in here, and I just returned to the surface. I wanted to check the areas around the giant's cloud. Maybe there is some cave up here that'll lead me to the Obsidian Vault? It would make sense to have them both somewhat close to each other, but I didn't notice anything up here. I headed to the edge and began to check around the base of the mountain, and after a short distance, I was correct. I found this cave entrance hidden the way fairly well, and walking into it a little bit, I found Trollstein. I made my way to the lowest point in the cave and then begin to dig down and around, trying to find another section of the cave. Upon reaching it, I placed down the golem and ran. There were dozens of enemies in here, and it took a little bit to clear them out. I had to respawn the iron golem about three times, and once I didn't hear too much fighting, I ran out and lit the place up. Right there in the center of the room, the obsidian vault. I killed an enchanted troll, and then got this trolling achievement. In the background, I saw Cersei, some boss apparently, and killed it too, unlocking another achievement, which I also believe it's a part of that quest line from the beginning of this movie. Once the room was clear, I began to mine the obsidian vault with my giant's pick. It was taking a while to do so, so I went to the top of it in case enemies spawn in. And, well, this thing took over one minute to mine into. The entire time, I was incredibly suspicious and began to notice this can't be the obsidian vault. Once I got in, there was only one chest, and it had magic beans in it. So I looked at Google again. I'm really trying not to as it ruins the fun, but I was confused and didn't know what to do now. Apparently, I have to head back to the giant's cloud, because get this, my idea was correct. The correct troll cave is actually below the giant's cloud. I just have to dig down there. So I went below the cloud and did that. And boom, I hit the cave. Google was correct again. I spawned in my iron golem to go to town and secure the area, and wow, he just did such amazing work. Really incredible stuff. After setting him free, I saw the actual obsidian vault, a giant behemoth, and I got to work on the first section, but this time, it didn't take a minute to mine it. It actually took about 30 seconds to mine this time, and once I got the second section done, boom, there was the double chest. And first chest made me freak out a little bit because it had more dummy magic beans. A good joke, really, but the second chest had what I needed, the Lamp of Cinders. I needed this magic genie lamp thing to burn through some spiky vines to get into the final castle. So I headed up and luckily for me, the final castle is weirdly right here. I went over to it and tried out the Lamp of Cinders. Thankfully, there's no durability on it. And if I hold down right click, I can make a big boom boom. That also lights my iron golem on fire. I had a massive amount of fun with this item, so I took my sweet time going through the vines. It was just so pleasing to go boom and and then instantly break the ash. Anyways, I got to the mountain and water bucketed my way up, and looking at this castle, this place is daunting. I first thought that there was going to be incredibly hard enemies here, but something was off. I was seeing animals up here, and no enemies. Nor did I see any entrance anywhere, so I found a nice wall and made my way up it. Once I reached the top, I don't know what I was expecting, but it sure wasn't that thing. I don't know if it's friendly or not, but I slapped down an iron golem and then watched it throw with this huge cheeked up enemy off the edge. With a rear like that, it probably survived the landing. Down the hallway, there was another blocked door, just like the Urigas building, but this place was incredibly dark. Torches barely helped, but I continued around the place lighting it up. Then a preschool attacked me. No, seriously. Little gremlins came out of nowhere and attacked me. These things are everywhere, and I'm assuming this is the teacher, which is extra creepy and throws poison. It reminds me of my second grade teacher. And there were the three enemies of the castle. I never saw anything else. Just the preschoolers, poison teacher, and cheeked up cube. So clearly something is wrong. I looked up on Google and yeah, this boss is unfinished. Apparently it's been unfinished for like two years now, which is a bummer, but I don't see this as a waste of time. I went outside and went to the roof and yep, there's the boss's cage. And in the center is a spawner that does nothing but say final boss here, you win. But I didn't want to believe it. There has to be something here, right? I went to one of the side doors, opened it, and my golem took care of the assassin. I went down the stairs and into another room. It was pitch black, so I placed torches around and then saw this strange cube, completely unboxed by a force field. Upon entering it, there was just a large staircase on the center. I began heading down, and this went on for a while. Just kept going dozens of blocks down, until I reached another force field box. Outside of it, more and more force field boxes of different colors. And the worst part? There was a second grade poison teachers everywhere. I ran around for about a minute, lighting up the room, and then I came upon another pink force field box. Inside, another staircase. Same story, went down but 
honestly, I can see there's nothing here. It's just more second grade teachers. This just looks like a placeholder for future mobs. So I guess this is the end of the Twilight Forest. I made it back upstairs, went to the bridge, and then water bucketed my way back down to the ground. I had one last time of fun with the Lamp of Cinders. My Iron Golems hated it. However, I know there's more to do in the Twilight Forest. I know I didn't take it all on. There's some rainbow sheep, uh, mini bosses, etc, etc. But I don't want to make this entire movie about the Twilight Forest. And I've already been in here for like 30 days or something. It's been a year since I've been in here and I accomplished what I wanted. I beat all of the bosses, just like this Iron Golem beating the Endermen through a tree. I made it back to the portal and did my 360 jump back into the overworld. Then I slept since it's nighttime. I took a little bit to look around at the sky again and also shaders. Then I tried out the Lamp of Cinders. I was curious if it would work here too, and it kind of does? Like, it does damage, I think, but it doesn't light stuff on fire, sadly. Anyways, I began to head home, and since I had some inventory space, I looted this graveyard. The graves had nothing, sadly, and when I went into this building, the chest inside was trapped with a thirsty ghost who wanted a hug. It felt like the cops were going to come soon, so I quickly left the crime scene. Then I just ran home, saw a freaky spider who did strange things and shot a weird bug at me, and then arrived home. As you probably already know, I spent the entire day getting organized. I went through and threw away some old items, cleaned up the place, and put stuff away. But I had a lot more stuff than I expected. It took me about half of today to completely put everything away, and I found these two treasure maps that I wanted to go and check out, because why not? The sun is halfway down, so I had to be quick. I cannonballed off the waterfall and headed out. Along the way, I actually found Shrek. However, he couldn't stay and talk. Something about leaving to go film Shrek 4 or something. I snuck into his house and he had a meat chest. Not surprised, and actual nice ores. But once I got back to following the treasure map, yeah, it led me to a place I've been to before. Remember the village with the spooky sea monster that I stayed at right before finding the floating village? Yeah, it led me here. I slept in the village and I have one map left. It's a ruined portal one, but hey, why not check it out? And this one is actually really close. It's almost under my floating village home, and it has terrible stuff. There's a pillager tower right next to this, but it's the one from like 40 days ago, and I just played with the pillagers and this giant beetle that kept jumping at me. It reminds me of a smart car for some reason, but sadly, all of the maps and places around here, I've seen, and I want an adventure again. So I went back home, put away what I gathered, and then began to think. That's how you know something amazing is about to happen, sort of. I headed out in a direction that I don't know because I'm not a compass. There's actually a ton of dungeons and special bosses that I haven't seen yet. It's just, they're like my father, super hard to find. So I came upon this really dark place. I thought it was going to lead into a dungeon, but no, it's like the inside of a poop shoot. I figured there was nothing else, and as I was leaving, I saw these giant ants, but didn't stick around and went back to exploring. I saw this campfire on top of a hill and went up, since it's also a good spot to fall asleep, and then I saw a building in the distance and knew I was on the right track. Especially when I woke up and jumped on this ant hill and two popped out wanting to hurt me. I actually didn't know that would happen. I went down the hill afterwards and went through the jungle to walk up to this house. I scanned the entire area and it didn't really look deadly. Didn't hear anything inside. I said hi to the ants on the corner though and then went into the bathroom. I headed straight to the toilet and drank it, immediately gaining superpowers and strength. Then I found my most favorite thing in the world, a magic desk bell. Oh my god, I was in heaven. We all know and agree that villagers are awful, so now I could torment the villager and constantly have it teleport back here with a new name. I felt like Drake, but I sadly couldn't steal the bell. I went into the villager's bedroom and yoinked its bow. Didn't want it to come after me. There's a second story apparently, but this anthill was perfectly blocking the staircase. Keyword on was. I went up the stairs and looked around and then came to this door that said forbidden section do not enter without permission. So I entered it without permission, stole the supply ship chest, and then read this dark arts book. On normal Tuesday really, but that's all there was. I went to the roof and began to look around. There's usually always some kind of place to explore within rendered distance, which there kind of was. I ran forward and found this raised village in the swamp. Beautiful designs, but I didn't see any villagers. So I entered cautiously and heard a witch in this house. No idea what happened to her, but this place had cool knickknacks, so I oinked them. But as night was falling, I was going to go sleep, but the blood moon came back. Luckily, I was in this village and I ran to one of the homes and went straight to the top floor. Unless the enemies fly through the walls, I'm safe here. Given I could have gone out there and had fun, farmed some experience, but I'd rather play it safe. Also, I went on my phone and waited out the night. Morning came and so did the rain. Absolutely love how it looks. Also, this mixing cauldron, there was some wheat and sugar in it, and there was one open slot. There was one piece of sugar left out in the rain, so I'm certain it's good to use. I slapped it in the open slot and then watched the cauldron mix itself. Personally, 
I think there's too much milk in there, but oh well. A few seconds later, and then there was a cake in the bottom of it. I'll take it. Nothing else really happened in here, so I left the village like Itachi and headed out. I walked a little bit, and then in the distance, I barely saw that spooky house with the basement and the dungeon tower. The floor was missing on the tower, and it was a smooth sail to the top. Iron Golems did the work, and I took the credit. The only important thing from this place is that I found a tasty bone in a chest. I couldn't eat it, however, it let me spawn in a wolf, exactly like the Iron Golem. So now, I'm really set for any fight. I made it to the spooky murder house, and since I've also been in one before, I just went to all the spots that had chests and good loot. I also got my strength to level 24, and then saw this cult member smash into the ground. Night was falling, and slight issue. I kind of left my bed all the way back at that one anthill that I stepped on, about two days ago. So I explored the house for a bed to steal, however, I couldn't sleep anywhere because of the pillagers outside. So I used 1% of my power and went into the basement and slept in there, since the enemies are too far away down here to prevent me from getting my beauty sleep. I freed the villagers in the morning again and then headed back outside. Sadly, the rain was gone. Really miss it. That's definitely something no British person has ever said before. And went back to exploring. The jump scare Grim Reaper came for me, but I guess he forgot that the sun is bad for him. Awkward. And now I'm just trying to find a dungeon. There's just so much content in this mod pack that none of them want to spawn in. But this mini Hydra sure wanted to spawn in. It was strange to actually see the head. So I turned around and went away. Absolutely no way I want to fight it. I came upon this hunting lodge kind of hidden away and I thought it was going to be a cute empty place. No, it had some hunter illagers inside, which the second one ran out and performed a 360 no scope on me and landed it. I was so stunned and embarrassed so I robbed their house. I came to the edge of the land. I'm guessing it's open ocean, but I'm not certain. I was seeing all the same stuff that I've taken on and honestly, I really really don't feel like looting and exploring houses or towers anymore. So I saw a bridge out in the ocean and I wanted to see what was up with it. I went to chop down a tree for a boat, which by the way, I figured out what that weird strip log thing is. If you chop it enough, it'll instantly chop down the tree. Kind of nice. With the boat made, I went over to the bridge, which led to a giant tower. But this giant tower is different because I said so. Also, it's different from the other ones that I've taken on already, kind of. As soon as I went inside, invisible skeletons again. But for these ones, they're wearing armor which kind of defeats the purpose of being invisible. There was also a poison boss which did a tremendous amount of damage. It killed my iron golem and dog, and then got into a silly wacky shootout with it. I won, what can I say, I'm just too good, and then made it to the second floor and almost died. I'm a man of many talents and I don't like bosses anymore. After all of that, the third floor had a chest, which had a weird map. It had no name except for the .exe name, and it said Thornborn Towers at the end. It sounded like a fun adventure to me, so let's do it. The best part, I have to go back the entire way that I came. When I went into the water, I saw this well in the ocean. I dug down into it and then tunneled into this room. It didn't lead anywhere, just a little pod room which also had a chest that gave me my third iron golem totem. Sadly, I can only spawn one iron golem in at a time, except when it glitches and two spawn in, so I can't really make an army. But I went back to my boat and continued to follow the map. And then I messed up. As you can tell, there was a huge jump cut right now. Yeah, I forgot to record day 66. Basically what happened, while following the river, I saw this staircase leading into the water, so I went in to check it out. It led into a catacomb system and I began to explore. It's all tight corners with zombies and skeletons everywhere. That's all that really happened. Now that I can show you what's in here, there's chests everywhere. Most contain iron tools and armor and then some ores, nothing to write home about. The pathways are incredibly tiny in constant turns, which this golem loves. I never have to wonder where he is because he likes to make it known. I guess this skeleton wanted to play tag because because he hit me and then ran away. I walked around until I found a staircase leading down. This place is a lot more massive than I thought, so obviously there would be a boss here, right? Well, I don't know. I did find some bigger rooms, which had these large graves in them, and then I found a water park where the water just never wanted to stop. The entire area was pretty huge, a lot of tiny pathways still, and sadly, it looked like someone or something came through here before me. The graves were all looted and nothing was left. I did finally find some of the spawners, and the chests were getting worse. I was getting insane with the constant zombie groans everywhere, and then I found their cube. This entire room was filled with zombies. I said hi to them all and broke their spawners. Finally, some peace and quiet. I then fell asleep in the cold, musty room. I'm sure there's a boss down here or something incredible that I should see, but I'm honestly good. The place is cool, but I don't want to spend any more days down here since it's too repetitive for me. I was planning on just mining straight up to the 
surface because I figured there was no way I'd find the entrance again. And then I found the entrance again. I went to the center grave and drank the delicious crypt water. Surely nothing bad about that. And then I went up the stairs to the outside again. This is basically what you missed for the day I forgot to record. I went back to following the map and then my heart sank. I thought this wizard tower was the location on the map and it didn't look like there was much here. That part was correct, but luckily this isn't the spot. I went up to the tower and I found the waystone from RL craft, but this one didn't let me do anything. But I can at least break this one. Next, I just kept exploring. Found some cool biomes. This nice lake area with Sakura trees in the background. Oh yeah, then I found a dragon. Well, I think it's a dragon. I actually never got to see it. The thing was invisible, but the fire wasn't. I did my normal strategy again and tried to see it underwater, but no, never did. I decided to be safe and I dug underground and then heard the dragon. The dirt at the top is charred now, and just like all my other dragon encounters, I came upon this cave and slept in here. Day 69. Stop laughing. Oh, what a day. A lot happens. So I've been down here for about a minute or two. I didn't hear the dragon anymore. So that means he went away, right? Well, just to be safe, I dug a tunnel away from here. After a good distance and quite some time mining, I went to the surface since this had to be far enough, right? So I saw the dragon right behind me. The thing was following me and keeping silent the entire time. I immediately started running and it also started shooting fire at me. Luckily, we are in a forest with massive trees and the dragon can't really follow me too well. I did lose it in there, but another goal for this movie, I want to kill a dragon. I'm tired of them bullying me. I traveled through a swamp area and I really just want to show this because it's beautiful. And then in the distance, hidden behind trees, the tower. A massive boy that reminds me of the Urigas Tower. Underneath this thing, it's huge. That's what she said. But strangely enough, there's no enemies around this tower, except for the spot with fire that I thought was a dragon, so I started to worry and think that it followed me all the way here. I looked around the tower to get inside and hopefully hide from the dragon, but I never found an entrance until I made my own. And entering the place, it's filled with leaves and darkness. Here you go, bud. You're in leaves. Calm down. Whoops, I didn't mean to punch you. I, I didn't mean to punch you. I'm trying to help you. You know, I, I, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm really not trying to punch you. Before continuing on, however, I decided to sleep. I dropped down in the morning and looked around. Apparently, there was an entrance, just a really hidden one. In the room next over, the enemy that controls this entire build rushed me. Skeletons. I got happy. The dog got happy. I'm assuming the skeletons were happy because they were playing chase with the dog. And since I'm out of arrows, I was going to spawn camp the spawner for a little bit. Just farm it up. But then I realized why? Why should I stay and wait here when there's an entire giga tower full of skeletons? So I went up the stairs, lit it up, and the dungeon is on. My dog showed me where a barrel was. Without him, I definitely would have missed it. No way I would have found it. And the chests throughout the dungeon are all the same, because there's only one chest design, but also they just have ores in them. The conquering went the same way. I would plop down the iron golem and dog, and then run and get the enemies aggroed on me. The two teammates would then proceed to have fun. An enemy that I only encountered once really stood out to me. This possessed armor. It had a custom model, animation, sound, everything. Even when it died, was really impressed by it. Another thing that stood out to me were bees. Some rooms had beehives in them, and I saw some bees flying around outside. Not sure if they were supposed to attack me, but I guess Bumble came by earlier and now we're all friends. Anyways, I made it to some library and slept in there after lighting it all up. Hello, boys. Goodbye, boys. Oh my god, oh my god, no, they know how to use ladders, they know how to use ladders. So they gained the knowledge of how to use ladders, it really surprised me. After all of that, I went up some more, same old thing. But then I reached the top-ish floor, four different ways to head on. Walking out onto the platform, the place was gorgeous, and no skeleton in sight. There was this nice cherry blossom tree in the center, and I really wanted to try an MLG water bucket off this place, but I really didn't want to travel back up. Here's some spark notes for what happened next. Dozens of fights. Just endless skeletons coming at me from these corner spawn rooms. I lit them all up to prevent any more spawning. Then saw this dude chilling on the railing and taught my dog how to handle them. I then heard some flying enemies and then saw some flying enemies. Phantoms carrying skeletons. Possibly the worst combo ever. I shot at some while on this bridge but then wanted to get the high ground. Obi-Wan would be proud. Reaching the top of this tower, it was an epic battle. They kept shooting me. I kept shooting them. I landed every single shot, didn't even miss once. 
Then night fell. Hopefully it didn't hurt itself and went to bed peacefully. So this will come at a surprise. Getting shot will lower your armor's durability, and I don't have any more armor on backup. Of course, I can make iron armor, but who wants that? So I ran around the place trying to find some chests that would hopefully have any kind of armor, which I figured the center area would. I got distracted and played tag with a skeleton. I made my way to the center area next, and well, there was a spawner here this entire time, meaning all of those arrows were a waste. Inside the chest, it had armor, just not the part that I needed, but it did have a lot of diamonds. The flying rats were mean and didn't want to come down low enough for me to hit. So rude. And then, when I was looting the chest again, it happened. The weather summoning sound. The second time I've heard it in these 72 days, and I was worried. Maybe a boss spawned in here? I don't know. If you'd like to tell me in the comments below, I'd really appreciate it. After that, I wanted to get off the roof and went back inside. I splurged a little and made myself some diamond boots. I wanted to look around for my next adventure, and and I noticed this witch village was on fire for some reason. Dragon, maybe? Or maybe that's where I heard the sound from. And then I almost got shot off. Yep. While looking, this skeleton snuck up on me and almost shot me off. So I went on a skeleton hunting party and said hi to all the skeletons I could find. It was all really repetitive, and I ended the day off with finding the school corner building and fell asleep to the sunset. My dog impressed me in the morning, and he took the charge up the ladder and killed a skeleton. So proud of him. I went onto the roof and looked around. Couldn't see far because of the render distance, however. I looked at the witch's village, I figured the sound came from over there, since it's mostly destroyed. But I really don't know what made that weather summoning noise. I was actually going to leave the dungeon, but then I saw the tallest point of this place. Surely, something important up there? Maybe a boss fight or really good loot? With the beauty shots done, the floors were just like the rest. Lit up this bee meeting room, and after several minutes, I reached the top. It's the exact same roof area as the lower one I went to. Except the flying rats here are kind and came into melee range for me. The spawner was working overtime, so while the golem and dog handled the rats, I broke it and then we cleared out the area. Inside the chest, some alright stuff and another map, which led to a place that I truly don't care to find. Shucks. So I'm really high up in the air. And these are usually the best times to look around and find out where to go, right? So I raised my render distance and no, the only thing in the distance was that tree trunk enemy place. And I don't want to go there. It's almost day 100 and I want to find some new dungeons or even dimensions to explore. I left the tower via water elevator and headed to the ocean. Upon reaching the shore, what is this thing? I first thought it was a dragon and that it was something huge, but then it got incredibly tiny and was just confusing. Almost as confusing as this water serpent snake that jumped on land and then continued to jump. I patted it on the head to try and calm it down, and then it went to sleep. Beautiful creature. So as we can all tell, the ocean is completely safe, and I ventured out. I quickly learned that in the middle of the ocean, it's just empty. There's no land out here. Crazy, right? Almost as crazy as finding this pirate ship, and hearing some strange fellow shouting about how he has a jar of dirt, and to guess what's inside it. So I boarded the ship and plopped down my minions. I guess the pirate's sea legs prevented them from moving around because they awkwardly stood there as I killed them all. The ship is tiny so it didn't take long to explore. Their food chest had food, surprisingly, and the other chests had iron stuff in them. I never did find that jar of dirt, by the way, and then fell asleep in the captain's quarters. Before heading off again, when I was coming to the ship, I saw some underwater buildings. I wanted to check it out, and also it reminded me of my ocean-only world 100 days video. Only issue, this place is incredibly annoying to check out without Aqua Infinity on my helmet. So I constantly had to go down and up, so I wouldn't die. For those wondering when the lore series is continuing, I'm working on it right now, and I'll be releasing all episodes in December. Hope you're excited. Back to the story, there's ancient mermaids down here. I figured they were hostile, but all they ever did was stare at me. There were some chests here and there, but this place was just ruins, and I thought there wasn't anything good, until I opened this chest and found one of the nine eyes of Ender that I needed to enter the end, if you all want me to do that for 200 days. I checked the entire place and returned to the ship. I got ready to sail off and went into the sunset again. Then I boated over the creepiest sound yet in the game, a guardian temple. No, I'm not taking it on. And then I got chased by this giant dummy snake while heading to the pirate ship. I figured it would jump on land and fight me, but it vanished like the Avatar. The pirate ship was also decked out in skeletons, and I fell asleep to the green sunset in pirate ship. I hit it over right away, and boom, mermaids. I was put into a trance and dragged to the ship. I got stuck on the side of it with the spawner in the water giving me enemies. It wasn't going away after a while, so I had to break through the ship while being forced to jump, and there they are. I tried to shoot them with my bow, but it wasn't 
and easy. However, I think I landed a shot because they began to swim at me. For some reason, I was able to walk around at this point, but my screen was still pink. I figured it would go away after some time and I water bucketed up to the ship. Skeletons everywhere and they clearly didn't want me or the iron golem up there. I wanted to get rid of the mermaids to make my screen not pink anymore, but when I went back to the island, it disappeared. I chopped down a tree and made some earplugs. I only know this because you all told me this in the RL craft series. With the earplugs made, the mermaids couldn't control me. I went to their island and said hi to them with my minions. With that cleared, I went to the ship and chopped my way into the bottom floor. Inside, there was a disco skeleton who was just jamming out, so I left him there. I swear. Making it to the stairs, however, endless enemies. Just non-stop skeletons rushing me, and some of them were pooping out rats. Quite an interesting combo. One of the rats really wanted to jump on my head and start cooking meals with me. I was interested, but not that interested in it. Then came the big boy. This dude has nearly 200 HP, and I do about 0.30 damage per hit. At this rate, it would take me all year. But then the sound came, the blood moon. It came back, but luckily again, I'm in a place that I can board up and wait it out, which is what I did. The blood moon finally ended and I got back to work. I went up the stairs and plopped the iron golem to get rid of any crowd, which it seemed like they all disappeared or died fighting other monsters. I went down the hallway and found one of their spawners. They really didn't like how I broke it and rushed me. And I mean, they really didn't like it. About a dozen skeletons all rushed the stairs and tried to get to me. Luckily, they were all turbo tubbies and couldn't make it down here, but they were all incredibly tanky. I don't think I would be able to take on the ship if my strength wasn't at 25. <laughs> Once they were all cleared out, I lit up the middle floor of the ship and was going to head up to the deck when that tanky boss was waiting for me and tried to ambush me. I ran back and placed an iron golem, which stood no chance. The skeleton boss massacred him and then came for me. What happened next was an epic battle that would look like the Greeks wrote it. Or it was super easy and just took a little bit of time. Once he was dealt with, the rest of the ship was a cakewalk. The remaining skeletons didn't move at all, and it was a quick fight. Then came the looting. In the captain's quarters, the only good chest was the one with five diamonds and 52 iron. Then the rain came. It's my favorite, and I hope it never goes away. There's nothing left to do with the ship, and I went back to exploring the ocean. Night fell, and it was incredibly hard to see, so I found this little island and slept. And you know what? While here, why not explore it? So I got this golden apple from this tent, super nice and then went for a lovely swim. Beautiful views down here. Oh, and a dragon came. Right over this tent, a lightning dragon swooped in and I was thinking of running. But no, I've done so much, fought so many things. I'm incredibly tanky and deal a lot of damage. Plus the iron golem and wolf are here to help me out. So we fought it and it took like 20 seconds to kill it. it was actually really easy. Honestly thought it would be tougher. I then went and harvested the dragon's body, keeping everything it dropped. Luckily, it dropped enough dragon skills for me to to make a full set of armor. And my god, is this stuff incredibly strong. The boots alone are almost stronger than my chest plate. So if you thought I was unkillable before, we're in a new realm now. I went around the immediate areas and found another waystone that won't do anything. Not sure how to make it teleport and work. Then found a destroyed nether portal with some really nice loot inside. And then I found the dragon's nest. The chests are eh, but after seeing how easy it is to kill a dragon and how amazing of items I can craft from them, I'm definitely killing every dragon I find. And and then, when night was falling, in the distance, I saw that tribesman camp. The same one from my 100 Days in Africa movie. Which you should go watch if you haven't. As soon as I woke up, I rushed to the village and the fight immediately began. The orbital strikes were coming in, so I couldn't stand still. The minions were coming from all directions and I couldn't get to the big boy. I was non-stop being hit by the orbital strikes as well. Even when I was able to get in close, he would belly slam me away. Just like my mother. And then, a new thing happened. Once he gets low enough on health, the minions will begin to heal him and they won't stop until you kill them. So now I'm somewhat on a time limit. I was handling the healers pretty well, but after a few hits, the big boy boss got me down to four hearts. Another surprise arose. He became a black hole, sucked me in, stop laughing, and then exploded. Weirdly enough, for such a massive attack, it did one heart of damage. I was expecting to lose nine or something. I cleared out some healers, melee wasn't working, so I shot down the big belly boss with my bow and the fight was over. The second it all happened, some new mobs began to move in. Like this really cool tiny one and giant enderman. I left the camp and found this destroyed another building. While getting organized and looting, I realized I lost half my armor and the other half was almost destroyed. So I just put on the dragon armor and I love the look of it. I look amazing and the strength of this armor is absolutely insane. Just about two bars of armor now. I then fell asleep in the desert. So I want to stick around this biome because I haven't really explored the desert too much. And there's some dungeons and bosses that spawn here, apparently, and I want to take them on. But 
but I just wasn't finding anything good. I wandered for a while and found this redstone biome. It was like being on Mars if it had life and plants. It was looking like nothing would be here at all, until I spotted the dragon's nest. And I'm definitely going to kill that dragon too. But night was falling in, I didn't want to fight it during the night. So I camped at this destroyed nether building until daytime. I jumped off the cliff and did a sick water landing and made my way to the nest. Something was obviously off the closer I got. There's no dragon. I made my way up to the nest and then made my way down a hole by accident. It surprised me, but yeah, there's no dragon. I began scanning the surroundings and then I finally noticed something out of the ordinary. A giant windmill on fire. Dragon must be there. So I did my normal amazing water bucket down the nest and then headed over. Some zombie villagers greeted me outside. It looked like the place was on high alert, but I never saw the dragon. I found my way into the building and said hi to the pillagers inside, and then the dragon bursted through the wall. I'm surprised they didn't say oh yeah and offer me some Kool-Aid. The dragon was a fire type and I didn't have any Pokeballs to catch it. This one was dealing a ton more damage than the lightning one and took a while to kill. It got itself stuck on a cobweb and I sniped it down. I collected the scales and other items from it and was going to get organized until a pillager boss chased me down. It would light me on fire and I sprinted to the front stairs, plopped on a golem and waited for the deed to be done. There was nothing else to do here so I traveled onwards and saw that villager library place from a few weeks ago that had the nummy toilet water inside. Same old stuff, I went into the forbidden section like usual, messed with the villager and made it change its identity a few dozen times and then tried to drink more toilet water but I wasn't thirsty. Outside the front doors was a third waystone that did nothing and I collected this one as well. The next biome I found was this ashy, dark, and quiet place. It had these aggressive foxes in there and the whole place just felt empty and evil. Maybe there's a story with this biome? It was tiny however and I didn't find anything. There was this village right outside of it, in one of the chests, it had a belt. No idea what it's for but I placed it with my other relics and you can actually see it on my body. Which it makes me look unbelievably drippy so I'll leave it on. Ordering the village was a desert, which is great because I still want to find the desert dungeon or bosses. So I killed this worm and right behind me, another dragon. This thing snuck up on me and the fight was on. I placed down a water bucket to keep the fire off me and sniped the dragon, killing it incredibly fast and surprised myself. I collected the body parts and I still have no idea what I can use all of them for. I'm sure it's amazing stuff, I just don't know any of it. And now came to an issue. So there's a ton left to do in this mod pack, but I just can't find any of it. And a majority of the dimensions I can go to are insanely hard to do. Their portals aren't easy to make or find, so I searched on Google for what to do. So I could go to the Abyss 2 dimension and finish this movie with that place, but I don't like how dark it is and I feel like it would be annoying to watch. The other dimension that I liked was the Blue Skies one, and it's bright in there. It looks fun. However, the portal has to be kind of traded for, and the building is super hard to find. How hard? Well, I've traveled over 6,000 blocks so far and have yet to find anything close to it. But now that I'm specifically searching for it, maybe I'll find it? Anyways, after killing the giant, I found this cute little sandcastle. Oh, and a monster who probably built it. The thing never fought back and we said hi to it pretty quickly. And that sandcastle? I couldn't collect it. Made me want to cry. And for the Blue Skies portal, of course, I could keep searching around to try and find it, but we're almost at day 100 and I really don't want to make the ending boring. I really don't think I'm going to find the building or villager that will let me gain access to it. And then boom! When I woke up, there the Blue Skies portal was! So I opened the world to land and went into creative mode to make the portal. I know it's cheating, I'm sorry if it makes you angry, but to keep things going and to entertain you all, I just made the portal so we can have a nice ending. I went through and immediately, it's just like the Twilight Forest. I can't have shaders on in here or else it'll look bad. Ah, much better. I also wanted to see if it was like the Twilight Forest was sleeping. And yep, I can lay in the bed, but I'd be here forever. So no sleeping while here. Another thing you may have noticed and should know, my armor, tool, and weapon that wasn't made with Blue Sky's items is about half as good in here. My armor bar is almost half worse. And you'll see as I try and fight things, I barely do any damage. Still, I'm tanky and can fight, but it's barely as good. So I'll be relying on my golem and dog a lot in here. Another thing, this dimension is mostly oceans and incredibly barren. The wiki said there's a lot to do, but I don't know if I agree. The biggest thing to do here are the dungeons, which is why I came. First, I need to find a wizard tower and kill the boss there to gain access to the next dungeon. I finally found a wizard tower after traveling around 1000 blocks and I tried to enter it. So I can't place any blocks or water in this place. However, entering it, I can place down torches. Kind of confusing, but I digress. The first floor had nothing. I just lit it up and then on the second floor, there's a library. The window had a block I could jump off of and I quickly defeated this maze. One of the chests had a dungeon key. I got an achievement and apparently I need to get 
four keys total to fight the boss. Shouldn't be hard, this was easy. The second floor had a witch's chamber, and the witch poisoned herself, however, there was no key in this room. Surely the next floor would have three in there, right? Well, no, it had no rooms, and a pillager that wanted to hug me. I noticed that since I got higher up, there's a strange fog and wind noise here. The third floor had two rooms. The first one is a bedroom with a cat. I went and said hi to the cat, and then the cat said hi to me. His powers impressed me. The chest in the room had the second dungeon key. The second room was a prison of some sorts. The chest inside had the third key. The villagers I could trade with, but they were terrible, and then I went to the top floor. The boss's room. I drank this lock potion that I obtained from the witch's room. I have no idea what it does, but why not drink it? And then load up the room. I got the key out, and, well, nothing happened. It says I need four key totems, and then I didn't see this while recording, but the gatekeeper will sell me the final key? I have no idea who the gatekeeper is, unless it's the gatekeeper from the beginning of this movie, and no, I won't be traveling back to him for the key. I double-checked all the rooms in this place, and nope, I didn't miss a key. So I figured I'll just go find another wizard tower. The key should work there too, hopefully, and got to exploring. I turned up my render distance and went down to the lake that was right next to the wizard tower. Across it, I could see a village. Maybe the gatekeeper is here? I looked around and all the villagers wanted to sleep, and couldn't trade with me. I checked all the chests as well, and nothing of value was in them. Still no fourth key. I left the village and continued onwards. I'll just have to hope that I find another wizard tower soon. I went on a long, long journey in a galaxy far away. I was traveling for quite some time and then found this tower. Maybe some good stuff in there? Who knows? My minions and I said hi to the pillagers outside. There was about three, and then I went to loot the tower. I found some hammer and another wide eye of ender. Kind of sucks because I need eight different kinds for the portal. Can't use the same one twice. Oh, and the chest upstairs had a golem kit. I believe this is my fourth one now. Then I went traveling for about 10 minutes. Didn't see anything whatsoever until I saw the wizard tower. I immediately got to work and on the first floor, I looked out the window and boom, the second dungeon. I just have to hope that I can gain access to the boss here so I can go to that dungeon next. And made it to the cat's bedroom. We said hi and there it is. Another key. And it worked. I now have four keys for this boss and got an achievement. And made it to the boss's chamber. I got the keys ready and clicked on the lock. I teleported into some room with the boss in the center. The summoner can teleport away, which he does a lot. He summons mini iron golems to constantly come for me and he's incredibly fast. I tried to clear out the mini golems while my golem and dog went for the the summoner. At one point, the summoner poisoned everyone but me. It was a great attack. And then we got it to half health. Then the real fun started. He started to teleport around even faster. Could summon lightning now, and he summoned in a boss mini golem, who would not get off my cheeks. I began using a homing bow and relied entirely on my golem to kill the boss. The mini golems were just endless and required my full attention. Oh, and the summoner can shoot out a beam. Kind of like a Kamehameha from Dragon Ball Z. Then strangely enough, while fighting the mini golems with my golem, the dog killed the summoner. I went over to where it died and picked up the summoner trophy. The boss keystone thing spawned in and I clicked it with a dungeon key again, teleporting back to the tower. I didn't waste any time. I headed down the tower and went out into the spooky fog again. Walking up to the green dungeon, it was ominous. Inside, the boss is a giant tree, so all the green makes sense. But what doesn't make sense is where the entrance is. I circled the entire building and then finally found it at the last section and it's a huge staircase. I went up the stairs and here's the thing. This entire place is basically the same. Almost every room has spawners in them. I focused those while my minions fought the enemies, which are green versions of the mini golems that I just fought. Inside about every single chest are these fruits, saplings, and building blocks. I also cannot break any blocks in here, just like every other dungeon I took on, sort of. Just wanted to say all this instead of show it so I don't have to make these days too long. Because spoiler, this dungeon took quite some time. Now, back to the story. I was able to complete around 10 rooms today. Nothing special happened, all the same enemies, until I made it to the last room today. Inside, a dungeon key. In my heart sank. I'm really hoping that I don't need to find four of these keys and the dungeon only has three. I started off today with an enchanted stone and very awkwardly watching me destroy his spawner. If I had to guess, he didn't like it. Boop. And then I guess his brother was in the next room because he also watched me destroy his spawner. Boop number two. My minions were also a huge help at times. Where I was about to break a spawner, they would walk in front of me so I lost my progress. But I think they did that so I would have to mine it again and therefore work out my arms more, making me stronger. Another room that stood out had at least two spawners hidden away. 
since I can't break blocks, I can't get to them. One of them was underground and the other one was in a tree. So I tried to light up the entire place to prevent them from spawning. And remember that wither summoning sound that would happen every now and then in some dungeons? I'm pretty sure it's because a boss spawns in, since that's exactly what happened here. They also make the same noise as a wither getting hurt. And then I found the room that leads to the next floor, but there were still some rooms I didn't explore yet. And I want to check them all out in case they have a dungeon key, which ultimately was a no for this floor in a waste of time. I went back to those stairs and made it up without messing up at all. I lit up the floor and there was only two ways to go. And I just so happened to pick the most difficult one in this entire dungeon. So in this tiny room, there's about nine spawners and they all spawn mini golems at different times. There's also no way to hide from them. So I can't break a spawner without them hitting me or messing up the mining. I was here for about four minutes and I was about to break this one spawner. I was tanking hits and right at the end, maybe around 95%, the mini golem messed me up and I lost progress. So now I have to fully rely on my golem and dog to protect me or hold the mini golems back, which it was finally working. Very slowly, but surely, I broke all the spawners in this room. And in the chest, absolutely nothing. Just some berries and other items that I didn't take. In hindsight, I really should have made some new tools from items from this dimension, so I wouldn't mind so slow or deal such little damage. But I'm stubborn and won't do that. Oh, I found the third brother from those awkward watchers and broke the spawner in front of him. But this time, I made the iron golem boop him. The first room I checked today, very luckily, had a dungeon key in it. Really hoping this place contains all the keys I need. Oh, and my dragon armor is almost broken, but I have a lot of scales to make more armor. The only issue, I can't place a workbench in here to make it. But surely, I won't need new armor. I'm totally fine, right? I went around the entire floor, same old stuff in each room, didn't find anything. Except for this fish trying to end it all in one of the rooms. Not sure how he got in, since those water pipes lead nowhere. But I left him to achieve his goal. Oh, and I accidentally found the staircase. Didn't realize it at first. It was also the last room on this floor. And now, for 4-3. I have three pathways to choose from. Heading down pathway 1, there was nothing. Just some parkour. But heading down pathway 2, there was also nothing. I was working on pathway 3 when my helmet broke. And this is when I realized I couldn't craft a new helmet. Of course, I could have left the dungeon and made this. But I found a helmet hidden away in my inventory, luckily. And once I thought there wouldn't be anything in pathway 3, I went up to the parkour room and in the chest, there was the third dungeon key. So now, I either have all keys for the boss or I need one more. Since I found the key on this floor, I was going to go up the stairs to the next one. But notice on the mini map that I didn't explore everything, which ultimately was a waste of time. Except for this chest, the Starlit Spear, a very important item. I headed back to the stairs and was hoping that it would lead to the boss. And to my demise, it was another floor to explore. And don't get me wrong, I love exploring. This entire movie has been me exploring, except I've been in this dungeon for over an hour and 20 minutes so far of the exact same rooms and enemies. I kept looking through the rooms on this floor for a key and then got distracted by the water hiding the chest. I don't know if it was because of Optifine, but this actually entertained me. A couple of rooms later, inside this chest, key number four. Of course, this is probably all the keys I need for the boss since this is what I needed for the wizard boss, but I wanted to explore and make sure. Then I played Ring Around the Rosies with this green golem and my minions. It was a super fun time. We were all laughing the entire way. I saw past one of the pillars and saw stairs. I could go straight to the next floor or keep exploring, but I wanted to see if I had another floor or the boss next. And coming up here, it's the boss's door. I tried out the keys to see if I could go in and yes, I can. I was immediately teleported into the room and the fight started. The tree boss sent out homing spikes that were a lot more annoying than they were deadly. I figured this was a phase. I just had to survive through it and then the walls will drop and I can fight him. Then some plants spawned in that shoots out spores. So I thought I had to get rid of them first, but no matter how many times I killed the plants, they would almost instantly respawn. So I went for the walls. Maybe I need to remove them, but no, my ax does no damage. So then I went up one of the waterfalls and shot some arrows in there, but the boss is invincible behind those doors. So now I'm just confused. I don't know how to fight him, so I looked it up on Google and apparently I was correct about the walls. I have to break them with an ax, but remember anything crafted with stuff that isn't from this dimension either doesn't work or is a lot less effective. And I can't leave this room to craft something. I'm stuck in here. And I really did try and find some way to beat this boss, even if it would be incredibly slow, but it sunk in what has happened and what I'd have to do. So once again, I went to creative mode. I had to spawn in some axes from this dimension so I could progress or the next seven days, I'd be in this boss room hitting birds. And there we go. I was able to destroy the wall. If you get too close, the Starlight Crusher will smash the ground, launching you up and dealing a tremendous amount of damage. If you're too far away, he 
deal with throw razor sharp leaves at you, also dealing a good amount of damage. The boss has 500 HP and the windows to fight him are very small, so I use the golem and wolf to my advantage to help me deal damage a lot faster. But wait, it gets even better. If you don't damage the boss fast enough, you will heal over time. So I have to deal with all of this, while birds and spore shooting plants keep spawning in and coming for me. A very tricky boss. Oh, I forgot to mention, he also has a spinning attack if you get too close after he smashes the ground. And to make this boss fight even better, I'm almost out of armor. I'm down to my boots and I don't have much left in my backpacks. I look through both backpacks and all I have left is this ruby chest plate that I got from the first wizard tower here. So this will have to do. I was making great progress on the boss and the crusher is almost dead. I began to use the spear a lot more, which can stun the boss, except for right here. I tried to rush the walls as much as I could, but the spikes are something I just can't ignore. I broke down the wall finally and chucked the spear in, stunning the boss, but I only got him down to 66 health. I rushed straight back in and was dealing a lot of damage. However, those birds were right behind me and I didn't want to get trapped in with the boss in case the walls went back up, but that wasn't an issue since the boss began to chase me down and I had four hearts left. The iron golem luckily distracted the crusher and I rushed right back in once it tired itself out. It was looking like it was about to die, but I got it to six health right before it rushed back behind its walls. I broke in and stunned him immediately, landing one last hit and I finally killed this boss after a long and grueling war. I was thrilled beyond belief. Since I cheated these in, I threw away all the items that I didn't make. I left the boss right after that and I was hoping I wouldn't have to travel through this entire dungeon to get out. Luckily, I could break blocks now and I took the easy way out. However, I couldn't place water anywhere so I began to jump down and take the damage. Now that I can create armor, I used the red dragon scales I had and created an entirely new set of armor, looking just as drippy as before. Then I began to head back to the portal home. And I know there's another dungeon in here, but honestly, this dimension just left a bad taste in my mouth. I wish I didn't have to cheat to get here, and I really hate that I had to cheat to get an axe to fight that tree boss. Plus, this dimension is too empty, and I'd rather head home and find something to finish off this movie. Also, the entire time heading home, I kept finding wizard towers and green dungeons, so I traveled super far for nothing. I was somehow managing to dodge all of these. Arriving at the portal, this weird cat dog kept chasing me. It also lunges, but luckily it can't aim. I could have killed it, but I snuck around the portal and managed to teleport without it hitting me. I was in awe looking at the sky. I really miss these shaders and the rain. I began to head home and then I found Shrek's brother. I was going to say hi to him, but he somehow made my arrow ricochet off of him and it hit me? Really surprised me with that move, and then my iron golem came to my rescue and tossed Shrek's brother in the air. I lit an Enderman on fire in the morning while running away giggling when I saw this airship, like something you'd see the Fire Nation use. I got time, so I chopped down a tree and headed up to check it out. I got an achievement called Sky High, and once I reached the door, the place looked normal and tight corridors, until I checked the cockpit. There was blood in the corner, so this must be an enemy ship. I went back to the front door and went up a ladder to dark rooms and machinery. I still didn't see any enemies. I found a spawner, but nothing came, and then I heard some skeletons in the background. I went through the tiny hallways and then found a skeleton wielding a flint and steel. I killed him and then broke the spawner, to only realize that a magma cube was left behind. Around the corner were some hidden skeletons, and I was lit on fire. I said it as a joke, but I guess this is the Fire Nation's airship. Up the stairs, there was a tripwire trap. I broke the string, thinking it would disable the machine, but no. Something got triggered, but nothing happened. Going under the slabs, the entire room was a fight club. Skeletons kept coming and lighting me on fire. Then I found one of the spawners, which they also can't get out of. Weird. I noticed that a dispenser and luckily got 36 arrows from it. Refilling up finally, and then got back to fighting. After a while, I went back to the front door to head home, but it was nighttime, so I did an MLG water bucket clutch and went to sleep. Now with the movie almost over, I have a super long way to travel. 6,500 blocks, and I'm honestly uncertain if I'll make it. I put it into high gear and booked it. I got distracted with this giant who really wanted to fight me, and then the Pokemon Sparrow found me again. I tried to outrun it and lose it, but these things are more determined than dragons. Night was falling and I found another weed factory, but this one was different. Some of the horses were skeletons, thought it was a cool find, and sadly, I can't take them back to base. I ended off the day with 4,000 blocks remaining, and I hightailed it in the morning. I skipped all enemies, buildings, annoying things, and just ran. But after a few thousand blocks, I was starting to realize none of this terrain looks familiar. All of this is brand new. Something can't be right, and 
Yep, this entire time I was running to that first house with the gatekeeper on the edge of the mountain. But it isn't bad, I'm only 1500 blocks from it. Then night fell, and this weird noise came back. I vaguely remember hearing this once or twice before, but it wasn't a blood moon. It was just a creepy sound, so I rushed up to the house and went straight to bed. In the morning, everything was normal and calm. No enemies anywhere or dragons coming to fight me. And then I got organized, which I had a ton. I accidentally forgot to put away some Twilight Forest items, and then I actually went through and organized the chest while putting away items items from my backpacks. Before ending off the movie, I want to test out these waystones again. I'm bummed they won't work, and if I can figure them out, this will be huge. If I do 200 days, this would be a massive game changer. But when I set the second waystone on the ground and right clicked on it, nothing happened. I still have no idea what to do to make it work. I did however get my strength to level 30, so now I'm incredibly tanky and deal a massive amount of damage. Then it was time to relax. I went to the roof of my house and looked out into the sunset, a tradition I haven't done in a while and I want to bring it back. A lot happened in this movie and there's still so much left to do. So we'll see what happens in 200 days. And if I find a way to get it when I do it, I can live it and forget it. Cause I hate how much I love you or I hate how you just put me in my feelings. I just wish you understood the gravity, but you got no sense.